Arch Oblers lights out everybody. It is later than you think. This is Arch Obler bringing you another in our series of stories of the unusual. And once again, we caution you, these lights out stories are definitely not for the timid soul. So we tell you calmly and very sincerely, if you frighten easily, turn off your radio now. Cat White. Well, yeah, your husband will be turned down here in a minute. Come on, Queenie, we better blow out of here. No, no, don't go, don't go. I don't want to be alone. What do you mean, alone? Your husband's in the next room, ain't he? Oh, that guy. What does he know about having fun? Work, work, work. It makes me sick where I've never been sick before. <laughs> oh, come on, kids. Stick around. Let's have some more fun. Oh, you can't stop me. Oh, he has the most marvelous stuff. Linda, Linda, Linda. Well, speak of the devil. Hiya, Johnny boy. Come on in. The water's fine. <laughs> Only it ain't water. It ain't water. I'm I'm not not heaven's sake. I'm trying to work. Oh, go away. Go away. You're spoiling my party. Throw him out of here, Kenny. <laughs> He's only my husband. Oh, oh, my get out of here, you. Oh, Take that other woman with you. Go on. Come on. Clear him up. Come on. Oh, no, no, wait. Don't listen to him. It's my house. It's my house. You. You kick them out. My friends. You kick them out. Linda, haven't you any consideration at all? I begged you, pleaded with you to try to keep these people out of the house while I'm getting some work done. And you persist in doing just the opposite. You kick them out. My friends. Yes, yes, I kick them out and I'll do it again every time I find them here. They're no good. You've given me your word time and time again to give them up. I'll call them back. I'll call them all back. You can't tell me what to do. Not me. They're my friends, mine. I'll give a dozen of you for one of them. All right, Linda. If that's the way you feel, I guess you and I have finally come to the end of the road. You haven't got a grain of loyalty in you. All I ask is a little peace and quiet in my own home, and I can't even have that. Ah, uh, go away. Go away. Night after night, you and those people, yowling and screaming like a pack of alley cats. And you the worst of all. I'm through, Linda. I'm through with you for good. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, no, you're not. Keep away from me. Keep away. Oh, Linda. <laughs> See? They're not through with me at all. They'll never be through with me. No. No, let me go. Let me go. I don't want you, you fool. You're not through with me. I'm through with you. No, no, Linda. I'm tired of you. Do you hear me? I'm tired of you. I'm going to get so far away from that smug face of yours that I couldn't see it with a telescope. Linda, my wife. Your wife. Why do you think I married you? I thought you loved me. I married you because I was sick of working in a two-bit barber shop. Because I was sick of living in a hall bedroom wearing bargain sale dresses. I wanted dough, plenty of it, all I could get. And you were the best chance to get it that came my way. No, no, Linda, you did love me. You must have loved I me. I loved you about as much as that canary up there loved its cage. I told myself I'd stay with you a year. Divorce you, stick you for plenty of alimony, and then get out. But we've been married five years. Yeah, five years. Because you fooled me. That's what. I fooled you? Yeah. Huh. You started to make a lot of money. More money than I ever thought you could make. <laughs> 
So you're giving me the air, huh? No, no, Linda, I love you. I'll always love you. I didn't mean what I said. Well, I did. Oh, Linda, don't leave me. You're no good. I know you're no good, but heaven help me, I love you. I'll never love anybody else. Get out of my way. No, no, I, I won't let you go. You've got to stay. Keep your hands off me. You're no good. You've cost me my self-respect. But you'll stay with me, you'll stay with me, or I'll cut you off without a cent. You won't get a dime from me, not a dime. Stop that. Stop that. Oh, you Sam. You fat-headed Sam. Stop that. So you're going to cut me off without a cent, are you? Oh, you fool. I've got everything that belongs to you now. You hear me? Everything. What are you talking about? What are you saying? His house. It's in my name, isn't it? The car. It's in my name, isn't it? I know, but... Oh, no, you... You wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't I? Well, listen to this, my darling husband. I cleaned out the bank account yesterday. Every cent of it. I won't be in the street. You will. Now, this is my house. Get your things and get out of here. I'll, I'll kill you. No, stop. I'll kill you. you. Come near me. Let me go. Let me go. Ah! Oh. You touch me again, I'll tear your eyes out. You, you cat. Get out of my way. That's what you are, a cat. A big, white, heartless cat. You think like one. You squeak like one. You claw like one. You even look like one. That's what you are, a great white cat. I didn't marry a woman. I married a cat. Keep it up. Keep it up. You're doing swell. Laugh at me. Go on, laugh at me. But you're a cat. A sneaking, yowling cat. Now, that's enough of that. You stop saying it. A cat. A cat. You hear me? A cat. Stop saying me like that. Stop staring at me. John. What's happening to me? John. My head. I can hardly see. John, help me. John. Linda. Linda! Linda! Oh, Oh, now, John, you've got to control yourself. Everything will be all right. Oh, Doctor, what have I done? What have I done? John, please, pull yourself together. You're not entirely to blame for what happened. What do I do? I did it. I'm to blame. Stop talking like that. It's preposterous to say you're to blame. She was hysterical, John. And the suggestion that she was a cat caught her in an unguarded moment and resulted in a temporary neurosis. Oh, Doctor, she's got to get well. She's got to. Of course, she'll be all right. A little rest, quiet, and in a few days it'll all be forgotten. Is she... Is she sleeping? Yes. I gave her a sedative. She, she's resting very comfortably. Can I go in and see her? But I tell you, she's sleeping, John. I know, but... Oh, I've got to see her. I've got to look at her. I've got to make sure she's all right. Don't you see? I've got to make sure. Oh, John, please. You've had a hard time of it. You'd better get to bed and get some rest. Oh, no, Doctor, listen to me. I, I've got to see her again. I, I've got to make sure that she's all right. I can't rest until I know. But I tell you. Oh, very well. Just for a moment. Yes. She's very quiet. Yes. Well, you see, she's resting very nicely. <gasps> Doctor. Look. Look at her hands. They're, they're claws. Her teeth. Her teeth. Linda. No, 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 John. You're waking her. Linda. So, uh, listen to her. Steady, John. 
John. I can't stand it. I tell you, I can't stand it. It's Linda. She's my wife, my beautiful wife. Linda. Linda. Sorry. All right. I guess I'm going a little crazy myself. What's happening to her? What is it? I don't know, John. I don't know. Listen to her. You've got to do something, Doctor. You've got to. You're my friend. You've got to help me. What? In the name of all that's rational, what? Think there must be something you could do, a drug, something, anything. Oh, John, I, I don't know what to say. I, I, I can't think. I'll call in someone else. That's it. I'll inform the authorities. They'll take care of everything. No, no, no wait. What, what's the matter? What is it? You're going to inform the authorities? Yes. Yes, of course, John. Don't you see it's the simplest way out? Way out? Of course, of course. For you and for me. What do you mean? John, this horrible thing that's happened to Linda, it, it goes beyond just you and me. It goes beyond the normal into the supernatural. Everyone should know about it. The world should know about it. Sir. You mean you're going to let everybody know what's happened to Linda? Of course I am. But you can't do that. She's my wife. You hear me? My wife. No, no, no. Now, don't get excited again, John. Listen sensibly. We owe it to science. Science? Who cares about science? She's Linda. She's my wife. And I cursed her to God and sent her into a yowling thing. <laughs> it's mine, Shane. Mine. But you're not going to tell a living soul about it. No one. You hear me? No one. That's my duty, John. I must inform the authorities. No, no. Keep away from that phone. Keep away, I say. I'm sorry, John. Oh. John. My friend. No, no. Try to sleep, darling. Try to sleep. Yes, yes, I, I know, I know, darling. But it's almost morning. You must rest. Sleep, Linda. Sleep, Mother Love. All right. All right, darling. I've got to be strong. I've got to help you. And I did help you. He was going to tell them about you. Everyone. They've taken you away from me. Locked you up, pointed at you, laughed at you. But I stopped him, Linda. I stopped him for you. He called me friend. But you're my wife, my beloved, and I love you. I've pleased you, haven't I, my darling? I never could please you before, could I? And now I've pleased you. I killed him, Linda. I killed my friend to save you. And if anybody comes, I'll say he never came here. And no one will know, darling. No one but you and I. What is it, darling? What's the matter? Why are you getting up? What is it? Why go to the window? What do you want? Oh, if I could only understand you. If I could only know what you're trying to say to me. Oh, oh, no. Oh, Linda. Stop! 
Yes, I'm coming, I'm coming. Good morning, Mr. Taylor. Oh, it's you. I found this note saying you wanted to talk to me. See, I hope you're not going to quit taking milk from me, Mr. Taylor. I know I've been kind of late with deliveries the last couple of days, but you see, it's my heart. Oh, no, I'm not going to stop taking milk. That's what I want to see you about. I want milk, more milk, cream, everything. Oh, sure, sure. How much do you want? Four bottles of milk. No, 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 six. Six? Yes, and cream, six bottles of cream. Is is something wrong, Mr. Taylor? Wrong? Why do you think something's wrong? Well, I only meant... You meant what? Speak up. You meant what? Oh, now don't get sore, Mr. Taylor. I just meant, well, you don't look so good, and <laughs> well, you know how it is. Sometimes a fellow has a couple too many, and he starts ordering all the milk in the world. <laughs> you fool. I'm not drunk. You want to sell me that milk, or do I have to get another milkman? No, no, no. I'll get it for you. I'll get it for you. Hurry. Six quarts, six cream. Only him and his old lady. The guy's nuts. Drink the milk, my beloved. Please. But you haven't eaten anything. You're hungry. You must be hungry. Oh, my darling, what do you want? I'll get you anything, anything. Just eat. No. Uh, no, I can't let you out of the room. I can't. Someone might come to the door. They'd see through the window. Oh, be patient, Linda, darling. I'll think of something. I... Oh, drink the milk for your own good, Linda. Please. No, 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 dearest. Don't do that. All right. All right, dear. All right. I'll let you into the dining room. But you've got to stay away from the windows. Someone should see you. Here, let me carry you. That's it. All right, darling, all right. I, I won't, I won't. Go yourself. Go yourself. You see, my darling, your pretty living room. Everything in it, just the way you fixed it. Everything. Oh, Linda, Linda, this horrible thing that's happened to us. I tell myself it isn't real. I'll wake up soon and everything will be the way it used to be. You and I. Linda, where are you? Oh, Linda, don't, 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 no, Linda. Linda, don't touch my phone. Linda. Linda, could you do it? Oh, could you do it? Oh, good morning, Mr. Taylor. Early again this morning, ain't you? Good morning. Uh, ever since you sent your wife to the country, my first customer every morning for the last three days you've been. Like I was saying to my wife this morning, I said, yes, yes, Mr. Heinrich, some other time, I'm in a hurry. My order, please. Yeah, yeah, but you ain't give me no order yet. How about a nice steak? What you can broil? No, no, nothing like that. But to broil a steak? Ach, I tell you, that's nothing. When my wife, she goes to the country, that's what I always make for myself. Uh, you lay the steak in the pan, and then you light the I'm pan. in a hurry, I tell you. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. You don't have to get too high blood pressure, Mr. Taylor. If you will tell me what you want, by God, yeah, I'll give it to you. Well, uh, I... I don't know exactly. A, oh, a couple of pounds of liver. Yes, that's it. Fresh liver. What? Again? No hurt me. Sure, sure, I hurt you. But uh, my golly, for three days, ever since your wife she went away, you 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 eat nothing but liver. Are you going to fill my order? Sure, sure, sure. I will fill your order. They are. Did you ever see such nice fresh liver? Huh? Oh, two pounds. Jawohl. 
Er wie Ar. Weil, Charlie, it could be you was raising a cat or something. Why do you say that? Well, every day you buy liver. <laughs> This morning I catched a couple of mouses in a trap. Maybe you like to take them along for the cat, too, huh? Don't say that! Don't say that! That's the trailer, the liver, you forgot. By golly, that man is for it. Now, what did I say that was wrong? Cats like to eat mouses. Oh, my Linda. My dearest Linda. Close to me. Close to me. Oh, my darling, my darling. It's better this way. You can't leave me now. I'll have you with me always. I'll keep you here, just you and I. I won't answer. They'll go away. All right, all right. I'll answer it. No, no, stay here, my beloved. They mustn't see you. Be very quiet. Yes, yes, I'm coming, I'm coming. Well, what is it? What is it? Are you the owner of this building? Yes, what do you want? Gilligan is the name. I'm your neighbor. I've got that place across the alley from you. Neighbor? Yeah, Gilligan is my name. I'm with the department. The department? Yes. I'm desk sergeant at the third district station. Are you? Yes. I'm off duty today, so I thought I'd drop over and speak to you. Uh, do you mind if I step in for a moment? Step in. Oh, no, no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, uh, thank you. Well, you got a nice place here. Yes, yes, nice. Very nice. You know, the same contract that's made this place has made mine. You didn't know that, I'll bet. No, I, I didn't. Yes. Yeah. Irishman by the name of Gil Hooley. He put up all these bungalows along here on nothing but Blarney and the shoestring. Jumped out of the story window, they tell me, the day after the stock market crash. <laughs> Lucky for him. If he was alive now, some of the people around here that bought places from him would murder him. What was the trouble they'd have him? Trouble? Say, now, speaking of trouble, it reminds me why I come over. If you don't mind, I'll tell you. Yes? No. So it ain't me that's complaining, Mr. Taylor. I'm the kind of man that can sleep in a boiler factory. But it's the case. Ah, there's a light sleeper for you. I always say that if a star in heaven twinkles too much, the noise wakes up, me case. What? What is the trouble? Well, you know how the women are. Always finding something to make a fuss about. Say, hey, I'm not disturbing her, am I? Ah, uh, yeah. You know, you're missing. She's not sleeping in the bedroom, maybe. No, no, of course not. There's no one in there. I thought maybe seeing the door is closed. Oh, no, I tell you, there's no one in there. My my wife, she's out of town. Oh, well, that's fine. That's fine. I always like to talk things over man to man without the women around. The women are all right, I says, but they don't know how to straighten our little troubles with neighbors without... Calling names and pulling hair. <laughs> oh, what is it? What's wrong? What do you want to tell me? Well, to put it plain, it's a cat. Cat? Yeah, the cat. You just got it, didn't you? You... You heard a cat? Yeah. It started a few nights ago. Oh, it ain't just a mean one, like I said, but... But, Miss Katie, where do you see our bedroom window? It's right on the alley. And by golly, she hears every meow that animal makes. You, you're wrong. Eh? I have no cat. But, but, me, Katie, heard. I heard it, too, for that matter. I have no cat. But I'm telling you, it's come right from this house. I tell you, I have no cat. Isn't that sufficient? Well, now, seeing as you put it so plain, I'll be speaking up plain myself. I'm telling you, I heard a cat yowling last night, and the night before, and the night before that. 
And as soon as my name is Thomas Gettigan, they come right to this house. Now, what do you say to that? Get out. Now, wait a second, Mabel Cole. Wait a second. Don't get on your high horse. Get out. Well, no, I'm not saying you're lying. I'm just thinking maybe the animal's caught in your cellar without you knowing it. Now, if you let me go down... I I'll... tell you there's no cat here. Get out. Get out of here. Oh, it's like that. Is it? You heard me. Get out of my house. Well, you sure are making a lot of noise about nothing, young fella. But it's your house. And if that's the kind of neighbor you want to be, I get... What? What are you standing there for? Get out. Get out. Now, just a minute. Take it easy. Your cat, eh? Well, what was that? I just... Uh... Nothing at all. You got no right Listen, to it. You may not be a liar, but you sure are something close to it. If that ain't a cat in that bedroom there, then I ain't never heard one. Get out! Get out of here! Oh, no, I won't. Listen to that. If that ain't creating a public nuisance, I'd like to know what it is. It's none of your business. This is my house. Get out of here. Now, stop pulling at me, Mibuko. I may be off duty, but I'm still an officer of the law. And I'm telling you, that cat, you got an air of violating the city ordinance. Now, if you don't make it shut up, disturbing me, Katie, I will. Uh-huh. Stay away from that door. Stay away from that door. That ain't your cat you got. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, I lied. It is a cat. Just a cat. But I'll make you be quiet, but go away. Go away. Wait a minute. Take it easy. If it's just a cat, what are you getting so excited? No, I'm not. I'm not. Look at you. Your eyes are blazing. What's going on here? I think I'll have a look. No, no. Stay away. No, no. No. Get away. Take it away. I told you. I told you to go, big one. If I only had the gun. I'll never use it. Never. Keep away from it. I asked you to go, didn't I? I asked you to. Didn't I, Linda? You heard me. You heard me ask him. Linda. Linda, what's the matter? What are you going to do? Linda, keep away from him. What are you going to do? No, no, Linda. Get away from him. Linda, Linda. Stop. 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 Oh, oh, he's in the eyes. My eyes. What does it matter? You cursed animal. You've taken everything from me. My eyes, my life. Now I'll take... <laughs> Linda! I heard my beloved. I heard you. I'm coming with you.
lights out to everybody. It is later than you think. This is Arch Obler bringing you another in our series of stories of the unusual. And once again, we caution you. These lights out stories are definitely not for the timid soul. So we tell you calmly and very sincerely, if you frighten easily, turn off your radio now. Two cents. Three cents. Four cents. Five cents. Six cents. Seven cents. Two dollars. Three dollars. Four dollars, five dollars, six dollars, two million, three million, four million, five million, six million. Tell you, Tony, that's what's wrong with the world today. Money. What are you talking about? Say, look, Tony, ain't that the pretty boat? You had a devil with the boat. What do you say about money? Hey, you said that money was what was wrong with the world. Fellers get a lot of money, and then they want more of it. They get that, and they want more, and pretty soon that's all they think about is money, money, money. Yeah. What do you think about that? Money. So what are you talking about? You you don't understand, Tony. Hey, you don't understand yourself. All the time you talk. Go away, let me alone. No, no, Tony. Don't get sore. I was only talking. Yeah, that's what's wrong. It don't make no sense. Money is what's wrong with the world. <laughs> you fool. You crazy in the head. No, by you mean I ain't crazy. I, I tell you, it ain't right. The man who works hard with his hands and don't think about money all the time can't have what he wants to have. What do you want to have, eh? A phone, Tony. A little phone. Huh? What do you say? Yeah, a little stock phone. Someplace good, like Wisconsin or maybe Minnesota. Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> I say something funny, maybe. Funny. <laughs> That's funny. That's <laughs> not funny. For 13 years, I work on the ship, and I have to save my money for farm. I don't like the money. I just want a farm for my wife and my kids. And then... Yeah, I know. Not in 29, the bank, she'll go bust and you back where you start, eh? Actually, I, I tell you, Tony, it ain't right. I work so hard and my wife and my kids. They wait for me to bring the money to buy the farm so they could all be together. Oh, shut up. I don't know why smart a guy like me wastes time with a dumbbell like you. Just because I work on the same ship with you don't mean I gotta listen to you shut up your mouth all the time. But I work so hard. So what? It'll work to make my rich. It's the break. Yeah, it'll break. Oh, I'm the best deep water diver in the whole Pacific. So what? Never get the break, so I'm still eating a ship, a slop, and a walk in the docks. Yeah, Tony, that's what I say. Someday, when a man works hard... Oh, shut up. You don't know what you talk about. You gotta get the door, big door. You can't get a big door with work. Someday it breaks, he's gonna come my way, and then Tony's gonna be a big shot. Tony ain't gonna take nothing from nobody. I'll grab that door any way I can get it. No, Tony. Money, if I ain't honest, don't make a feller happy. Uh, you long head. Telling you, when I get a chance, I'm gonna get that door if I have to make the devil my brother. I tell you it. sailors, move on, move on. No bumming around the dock. Yeah, yeah, officer, he go, he go. The fat belly. What's that? What's that you said? No, no, officer, he don't say nothing. Yeah. That is Mr. Tony, officer. He's the best deep water diver in the whole Pacific. Yeah? Well, if he said what I think he did, he's going to be doing all his diamond in the can for about 30 minutes. No, no, believe me, officer. Tony, he don't mean nothing what he says. He's a good man. He... Uh, shut up and get out of here, the both of you. Come on, Tony. Uh... And tell that big mouth diver friend of yours to get a job and dive out of town or I'll run him in. I'll cut out his heart. No, no, Tony, please. You come this way. We don't want no trouble. Shoving me around. Me, Tony. 
Best man who ever put on a dive in the rain. Let me go have something to eat. I'm a show with a mirror. Yeah. Money, she don't make no difference, eh? But I didn't say that, Tony. I said that work. Where the devil will work. Money, that's what you gotta get. Any old way but Gary. Gary and you, they eat out your hand. They kiss your feet. Come on, Tony, in here. We, we get a cup of coffee. That's what they say. Dog eat dog. I'm tell you, sweet. Me, I'm gonna be the big dog. I tell him what to do. Yeah, sure. Come on in. I pay. Mm, it's nice and warm. It's a dump. What are you going to have, boys? Uh, two cups of coffee. Well, maybe you like soup, eh? I got a nice hot soup. No, we just want coffee, please. And get the lead out of your pants. Okay, okay. Two coffees. Uh, so what do you want to do for us get the farm, eh, Swan? Yeah, my wife, she wants... Who cares about your wife? The farm. For 13 years, I've okay, worked... Okay, here you are, boys. Nice coffee. There you are. Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, coffee is good when you're cold, eh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that guy was willing. He don't drink coffee tonight, I bet you, eh? What guy? Well, the guy was winning the sweeping stays. You know, the, the, the seller sweeping stays. What's the matter? Don't you hear it? Yes, man. So what's this guy blowing about? Well, I'm telling you. The seller sweeping stakes. Everybody is buying tickets. $3,000 first prize, you betcha. He's in the papers, he's winning. Yeah, boy, he's lucky guy. So who cares? Give me some more coffee. Okay, okay. No, no, wait a minute, mister. Yeah? Uh, the seller, that one, you, you say his name is in the paper? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Here, I got the paper here. Get yeah. my coffee. No, wait, Tony. I, I want to hear. Read it, mister. Okay. He say uh, a winner, first prize is uh, uh, somebody... Who give the name of uh, uh, farmer? Farmer. That's smart, Swens. I, uh, I Tony, quick, quick, Where is he sick? Hey, that's my paper. Hey, Tony, come on, quick, come on. Hey, crazy square hat, wait for me. That's smart. Hey, wait, you crazy fool. That's smart. Where are you going? Tony. Hey, listen, it's me. Me. Me what? Yeah. What do you say? Farmer, that's the name I gave the man when I buy the ticket. I'm rich, Tony. I can get the farm. Yeah. Yeah. You mean you? Yeah. What he says in there, you? Yeah, Tony, me. I buy sweeps that ticket a long time ago. I, I win, me. I win. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Oh, no, I tell you, I win. Look. Former, that's me. Tony, me. For oh, my wife, my kids, they be so happy, so happy. No, no, yeah. no, no, wait. Ain't right. Huh? I mean, look, it's a given number here. Yeah. A uh, ticket number is uh, 6933. Uh, three. Uh, you got that number? I can't name former. I know it. Uh, but the ticket, where's the ticket? Yeah. You, you don't get a money without the ticket. Yeah, here. Yeah, I, I put it in my pop. No, she's not there. I, wait. Hold your pass. What about it? If you lost that, I'm a good. Well, no, I got it here. I, I got it, Tony. Let me see. No, no, please. 13 years, I wait. It's Mario. I ain't gonna hold it. I just want to look. Look. Six. Man, three, three, just like I say in the paper. Yeah. You? Yeah. You did win. Yeah, Tony, I win me. Oh, my honor. $3,000, and we wait so long. $3,000. Yeah. I get to see, Tony. I buy farm. Oh, my honor, my kids and me, we be the happiest people in the whole world. $3,000. Yeah. I buy the best farm in old Minnesota. Come on, Tony, I go get my money. No, 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 wait. Huh? If you don't go now, it's pretty late. But my money. Uh, but no, I, I tell you, they'll be cross now. You better wait uh, tomorrow. No, I, I can't wait. Thirteen years I wait. I got to get money. But they're going to be close, I tell yeah. Now, come on. Uh, we go on down dock and see what is the first boat. Eh? Boat? True. So, so right away, tomorrow quick, when you get the door for the ticket, you can catch a boat to home for the wife and the kids. Yeah. That'd be good, eh? Oh, yeah, Tony, yeah. Oh, my friend, I'm going to be so happy. All my life I've worked so hard. And now, three thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars. When I give you what you need, Tony, you were my friend. I, I want you to have something, too. Yeah. Hey, well, well, come on. Let's get down to the dock. Yeah, sure, Tony. Anything you say. We go look at the ships in the water. Then I get my farm. I won't get to seeing such things again, eh, Tony? Yeah, no, of course not. That policeman, I wish we meet him now, huh, Tony? Huh? Well, what's the matter? 
Why you want the cop? Uh, I'll show him we ain't no bombs anymore. Three thousand dollars this ticket this for. By him and a man's no bomb with three thousand dollars. No. No, you bet your life is not. Walter, she looked pretty. Yeah. She's deep right here. I don't care how deep the water is as long as I'm on top. You, uh, you swim? No, that's a funny thing, isn't it? Yeah. Fourteen years a sailor and I couldn't swim. Well, there's plenty of other fellas like me. And anyway, the man, he don't have to know how to swim to work a farm. Oh, that water, she's so dark and pretty. That's Yeah? Yeah. Hey, well, let me look for the ticket. Ticket? Hey, a slip stamp. Oh, why, you, you think maybe she ain't good, Tony, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I know she's good. Right away, when I heard that fellow say the former win, I know that's me. Hey, Tony, there it is. See, it's a former on it. That's me, see? Uh, <laughs> lean over it a bit there. I can't see. Is that it. sure? You see the numbers? It says six, nine... <gasps> Tony, Tony, you. Tony, what? <laughs> My knife is shot you up good, I swear. So, <laughs> so you can swim, I squared. <laughs> well, thank you for the last. There. <laughs> hey, what, Swenson? You, you forgot the sweepstakes thing. <laughs> Okay, I'll collect for you, farmer. <laughs> Three thousand dollars. <laughs> At last, I get a break. Shut up your mouth, hey? Play the old boy. Get your little pal. Oh, Tony, the best out there. Sure, 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 I'm a great guy. Got plenty of dough and a hot spank. Did that, boy? All right, all right. You can make a good lot of noise. We wake up the fried, eh, Tony? Don't you worry about the fried. Tony, it's all right, eh? All right, so now you go home and let me go upstairs, eh? Yeah. Maybe tomorrow night uh, we go have some more fun, eh? Oh, no. All right. It's a flamingo. Donnie's a great guy now, eh? Sure, I'm a great guy. Everybody knows Tony is a great guy. Yeah. States. Oh, oh, oh. Tony, is that you? Somebody waiting for somebody else? Poor Tony. I've been waiting for you. Let me help you. Hey, go ahead. Don't need no help. Not me. Oh, Tony, Tony. Night after night. Oh, go ahead, me. I'm all right. Great guy. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Spending all your money on those drunken fools. Yeah, shut up your mouth. Oh, careful. Uh, I told you I don't need no help from nobody. Tony, he takes what he wants. Hey, shut the door. Yeah. Now come here and give a great guy a kiss. No, I... I... Come here, you come. No, 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 wait, Tony, listen. No, I listen to nothing. But, Tony, the man said that... Hey, man. What man? The man that was here. He's been here a dozen times since midnight looking for you. Midnight? Who was he? What did he want? I don't know. He wanted you. Oh, Tony, I, I was so afraid. Afraid? Why, why was you afraid? Well, well... Well, well, answer me. Why was you afraid? Well, he... He was so strange. He... He acted so funny. What? You mean... Funny? Well, he... He spoke so funny. As... As if... As if what? Well, as, as, as if his mouth was full of water. You... You know, I'd make a joke with Tony, eh? No, Tony, no. I, I'm not fooling. Really, I'm not. He said that... Yeah. You say something? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to tell you. He said... 
tell him. Well, what, what, what did he say? Well, I, I, I couldn't hardly understand him. He, he talked so funny. But I, I think he said, tell him, tell him I was here. And, and then I think he said, the farmer. It, it, the farmer? Yeah, yeah, that's what he... Tony. Tony, what's the matter? What? What he looks like. What's the matter, Tony? What he looks like. Well, he... He was tall, and... And he, he looked like a sailor. And I... I think his clothes were wet. Huh? Oh, Tony, that's him again. That's the way he knocked before. No. Tony, what is it? You... You answer the door. I'm scared, Tony. You answer. You tell him to go away. Tony, don't stand there staring at the door like that. You're scaring me. Don't do it. You go away. You're dead. What? Dead. You hear me? Dead. I killed you six months ago. Oh, Tony, no. I throw you in the water. Toss the mile from here. You're dead. Dead. Tony, Tony. Scare my wife, but you don't scare me. You found me. I kill you again. No, Tony, don't. Why so go away from the door? I shoot. Tony. Ah. And one shoot you. Shoot him through the door. Tommy, get up. Tommy. Open up. Open up in there now. Open up. Tommy, I don't want to kill you. What's him, Tommy? Him. Open up now. Open up, Mr. Police. You'll swash on you. You think you got me, eh? You think you got me in a hot seat, eh? No, no, not me, Swash on you, square head. You forget the fire escape. Listen, Mike, you gotta help me. You gotta. Oh, take it easy, Tony. Take it easy. Every cop in a town. You shoot me down like a dog. Well, you killed one of them. What do you expect? Well, I'd kill them all. Nobody can stop me. Nobody. Oh, Mike. You're my friend. You gotta get me out of town. How much dough you got? I ain't got nothing. You're lying your teeth. You won the sweepstakes in Frisco, didn't you? Sure, but I'm going to tell you, Mike. Oh, no, no. Listen to me, cop killer. They got every road, every depot, every dock in this town covered. If it's free you want to get, then it's money it's going to cost you. Every cent you got. You'll, you'll get me out? So far out, there ain't a cop in the world can get you. Now listen, at midnight tonight, the SS Provost is pulling out to go down through the canal and then over to the coast of Ireland to go hunting for gold. Gold? Are you crazy? Now, so watch your tongue, me bucko. Gold, I said, and gold it is. Only they're going under the sea for it. What? You heard me. Under the sea. A million dollars in gold in the hold of the Tanya sunk by a sub. And these boys are going there to die for it. Die? Yeah. And if you decorate the mahogany in front of me with every cent you got in your pocket, you'll be on board that ship. You hear that, Swenson, you? Diving for gold. A million dollars. And me, I'm going to be on the board. Oh. You want to talk to me, Captain? Yeah, Tony. Sit down. Well, she's getting pretty rough outside, eh, Captain? Yeah. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah, I'm just... While you were sleeping before, the rest of the divers had a meeting. Yeah? Yeah. They looked over the weather reports, and they decided they ain't going to do no more diving. The white belly lock. Wait a minute, Captain. You mean me? We gonna turn the black here? Well, what else can I do? Three months out here in the open sea. And when we finally do locate the wreck, every mother's son of them turns chicken on me. So that's why you want to talk to me. Because even if you are no good rat, you're the best diver of the lot. You keep talking. Tony, listen. Under that buoy off the starboard, 
There's the Tanya with a million dollars in gold bullion in it. So? Go down and get your hooks into it, Tony. And whatever you get, half of it's yours. You... You mean... Half? Sure. You get half. And I'll split the other half with the crew. A million bucks? Yeah, Tony, a million bucks. And you'll have half of it. You can do it, Tony. You can do it. You know you can. See, she's getting her off. But you'll never get the bends. They tell me you've gone down in rougher water. Yeah, but that water, she's cold. Half an hour, I'm a finish. In that room with the gold, who knows where she is? Tony, Tony, listen. I know just where that gold is stored. You trying to fool me, I? Eh? No, no, as God is my judge, I'm telling you the truth. Jake located the room on his last night yesterday. He told me, only me, about it. So? Don't you see, Tony, it's a chance of a lifetime. I got cold enough for one more day out here. If we turn back, we'll never locate the wreck again the way that sea's running. Half a million dollars in gold for you, Tony, right under your feet. Don't be a fool, man. Take a chance and go down and try to get it. If you win, you've got the world right in your hand, Tony. Well, will you do it? The world. I'll get away from him. Huh? Him? Who are you talking about? Who's talking to you? What are you sitting there for? Get me a read. Get the pots to go. Ready, Tony? Yeah, give me the helmet, sir. Here you are. What are you standing there for? The helmet. Give me the helmet. Okay, okay. The captain. Yeah? What's the matter? I told you to keep the deck clear. Only the men I want. The rest to go below, or I don't die. All right, Tony. All right, you men. Get below. Every white smelling one of you. Come on. Here, hold up the helmet. What's wrong with the phone, eh? Hello, hello, hello. Well, why don't you answer me? Okay, Tony, I hear you okay. Hey, the valves. Okay, I'm ready. Put the helmet on. Okay. Uh, hurry up, your mobs. Hey, get them ports tight. You think I've got all day? All set, Tony. Okay, put them all set. Watch that pump. I come up and I cut your heart out. Half a million dollars. Me. What call it? Down, down. Half a million dollars. All right, Tony? Hey, sure, I'm all right. Let me alone. Okay. Down, down. What a dark. He came to me, Tony. Best time. Fifty, fifty. Half. Me. Ask for me. Hey, listen up there. I'm on a button. You hear me? Tony, listen. Captain says hurry up. Squall coming up. You tell the captain if he take me off before I give a signal. I cut his heart out. But Tony... Shut up and let me alone. Me. Ask for me. So gold was inside the door. I bet. Half a million. At the door, the captain said. <laughs> Me and the captain are 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> What does he say, Art? He says to leave him alone. He don't want to talk to nobody. Uh, that no good rat. I was a fool sending him down. He's on the bottom, all right. But what's he doing? Has he found the gold? Has he found the strong room? How long is he going to stay down there? Talk to him, Art. Talk to him. Tell him he's got the Captain. 
Это шею убивать, то Сам получил. Гордо. Рум пуля гордо. А ну, Ричи, пола моя Ольга. Ми, той Ричи. Ричи. Я, пола моя Ольга, а ты тоже. Who's talking? That's me. Who's talking? What's wrong, Tony? Anything wrong? You up there. I told you I don't want to talk. So now you don't listen to me. What do you mean, all the money I want? What do you say that for, huh? I didn't say that, Tony. I've been standing by up here. Standing by up here? Where did I get up there? I saw you standing by. Why did I get this hair set connection with my feet? I fix you so you don't bother me no more. No. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah. Tony. The yeah. captain says that... Yeah. So, I'll talk. I'll talk all you want, you selfish. Me, I won't hear you. Me, I'd be alone with my girl. No, Tony. Not alone. You up there. You stop talking to me. Stop it. I am gone here, Tony. With you. Oh. Who says that? I, I book the next. Nobody can talk to me. Nobody. I will talk to you, Tony. I got much to talk to you. It's in my head. That's what it is. In my head. Not in your head. Look. Look straight ahead. Excuse. You know me, Tony? Me in the water almost a year. Oh, no. No. Goes to the window in your helmet. Oh. You don't like what you see, eh, Tony? My wife, my children. They wouldn't like it either, would they, Tony? Away. Go away. No. Don't stay in hurry, Tony. We got plenty of time. Plenty. I worked for 13 years. You remember, Tony? 13 years for farm. Now I don't work no more. I used to wait for you. You. My ear. My ear. You take away my life, my kids, my life. No, I take a little air, eh, Tony? <laughs> you shoot a little air. No, I take off your helmet and come in with you, Tony, my friend. I come in. No, 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 his air. Is he getting air? Yeah, sure. Plenty. Everything's okay. Talk to him, Mark. Talk to him. If you don't answer, just yell him. Corey, signal on the lifeline. He's signaling us, Captain. What? Yeah, says everything's okay. Wants to be taken out. But he's yelling, Captain. He's still yelling. Call him in quick. Call him in. About the decompression. No, no, there's no time. We'll put him in the tank when we get him up. Something must be wrong. Okay, yelling okay. bunny murder on the phone is signaling okay on the lifeline. Hurry up, you men. Hurry up. Come on. Get him up. Get him up. He's not there. It's not him. It's something else on his line. <sighs> Captain, look. His airline, it's been chewed through by teeth. What is it? What's tied to the lifeline where he was? Well, it's... Mother in heaven. It's a bar of gold.
is Arch Obler bringing you another in our series of stories of the unusual. And once again, we caution you, these lights out stories are definitely not for the timid soul. So we tell you calmly and very sincerely, if you frighten easily, turn off your radio now. Miss Goddard, answer the phone, please. Yes, Mr. Obler. Yes? Oh, yes, Miss Harrison. Here he is. Mr. Obler? Yes? Miss Harrison. Oh, oh, thank you. Hello, Joan. How's the family lady? <laughs> yeah, am I in trouble? Well, the last lights out. I just don't know what to write about. Oh, no, I got plenty of ideas, but... Oh, well, men dying in foxholes, and what am I doing? Thinking of fantastic... Well, thanks very much, but I still insist that I ought to be... <sighs> yeah, okay. okay. Sure, I'll make this last one a good one, and then that'll be that. If I live through it. Huh? <laughs> no, no, I was just talking to myself. I've been doing that rather consistently these last few days. <laughs> yes, I, I guess all those zombies and ghouls and Luke Roos have finally caught up with me. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Two aspirins and a glass of water every half hour. Uh, now look here, Miss Harrison, don't worry about me. I'll get the story written tonight if I have to talk to the devil himself to do it. All right, all right. Yeah, sure. Oh, fine, fine. Call me back in an hour and I'll have some kind of a plot figured out. I hope. Give my regards to Norman. Talk to you later. Well, Miss Goddard, let's get to work. Yes, sir. What time is it anyway? 11.32. Sorry I have to keep you working so late? That's perfectly all right. I know you have to have that play done by tomorrow morning. I'm glad to help. You're an angel. Angel. That's a strange word to use here in this room where I've thought up so many demons and monsters. Tell me, or maybe you won't want to tell me. What, Miss Elber? Working with me on these lights out plays, do you ever get frightened? Well... You do, don't you? Yes, I do get frightened many times. Huh. There was a time I'd have found that very amusing, but not tonight. Is there something wrong, Miss Elber? I don't know. Tell me... Did you ever sit alone in a room at night and have a premonition? I mean, suddenly get the feeling that somewhere in the house, perhaps in the darkness in the next room, something was waiting, something of malignancy and evil? <laughs> Ugh, what's the matter with me? If I keep on talking like this, they'll be using me as Exhibit X in the psychopathic ward. Come on, let's get to work. Yes, sir. Uh, let's see. We'll start out next week's play with the regular lights out opening. Lights out, everybody. Chime, play your thing, you think, gone. First character is named, um, Hellman. Call him Hellman. Jack Hellman. H-E-L-L-M-N. Two hours. Got that? Mm-hmm. Um, he commits the murder and he, um... Oh, what's the news? I can't write another one of these things. Ghosts and groans and blood. I, I tell you, I can't do it. I can't do it. Mr. Obler. I'm sorry. Look here, Miss Goddard. You better run along. But aren't we going No, to... I just can't write anymore tonight. But the class, they'll be standing by. The rehearsal. The devil with the rehearsal. I'm not going to go insane writing these things for anybody. Now, now, run along, please. Try to get some rest and you come back early in the morning. We'll see what we can do. Just as you say. Are you sure you're all right? Please go. All right. Good night. Good night. What's come over me anyway? Why, why did I tell her to go away? Got to write this play? Premonition. <laughs> she must have thought I was getting soft and... Who? Who's there? Oh. Well, I am in bad shape. The wind rattles the window and I... <laughs> Light out. Author goes nuts. There's a headline for variety. I got to get down to earth. Quarter to twelve... Joan said she'd call back in an hour. I've got to have some kind of a plot by then. Let me see. How about a, a press agent named Black killing a man named White and Black and White murder? Oh, dead corny. Maybe I could use a story about a Hollywood producer. Let's see. Johnny Hour. He meets a girl and ends afraid because the girl's husband. Oh, is that out of character? How about Nero chopping off heads in the Roman circus and... Huh. Certainly it's quiet in here. Yell all day for quiet, and now that I've got it, I... I have got the jitters. 
What the devil have I got to be jittery about? Things are what they are, if anybody knows that I do. Two and ten makes four, unless you're talking about curved space, and then that head, hold on to what they've got, and anybody who's in this war for profit ought to have his bones broken off. And stuff. What the devil am I talking about? Uh, okay. I'd better stop kidding myself. I know what's wrong. I want to write it, and yet I don't. What's the matter with me? Afraid to put it down on paper? What have I got to be afraid of? Here it goes. <laughs> Get it over with and outline of title on this side of out of my system. Play opens in the cell of a monastery in the Middle Ages. A mystic is cowered in a corner of his room. Outside, a mob is clamoring for his life. It appears that a horrible crime has been committed in the village below. A horrible monster had torn a woman. It appears that this creature brought into being through the incantations of the sorcerer was the concentration of all the evil in men's hearts and minds. A tremendous force of fiendishness and inhumanity put into living flesh to roam the world and commit unspeakable hu- Of all the drivel. A tremendous force of fiendishness and inhumanity put into living flesh to roam the world and commit unspeakable hu- <clears throat> Well, drivel enough. There it is on paper. Me own monster conceived in me own mind. Congratulations, Papa. Have a cigar. Conceived in my own mind. Huh. That's what that crazy monk said in that book Matt Wolf gave me. I wonder who gave him that, that book. Conceived in... Where's oh, that book anyway? It ought to be... Huh. Yeah. I even marked the page. And I say unto thee that if thou shalt be evil and do evil and think evil, and let thy mind rest upon this evilness in the light of day and in the darkness of night for seven days and seven nights, there may come into being a thing of evil, and it shall take the form of the evilness of thy thought. <sighs> Written by a star mystic more than ten centuries ago, and I... Funny I should have thought of those words tonight. I've been thinking about him for a week. Shall take the evil, the form of the evilness of thy thought. Seven days and seven... Who? Who's there? No, no, no! You, you in my mind. You're, you're just in my mind. No, no. You, 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 you don't exist, I tell you. I thought you up your, your dream. I said a dream. When I wake up, no, it is a dream. It's got to be a dream. Come in. Come in, get me out of the dream. Get me out of the dream. Get me. Well, don't you ever open doors anymore? Now, what's the big idea it's, sitting in here? It's not a dream. It's, it's still... Hey, Arch, what's cooking? Eli, get out. Oh, now, Arch, Don't stand there. Look at me. Get out. Can't you see it? Can't you see it? Get out. Get out of here. Hey, what are you like? Hey, gag. See in here what? Behind you. Look behind you. Well, there's nothing behind me but the wall. Eli. Hey, what is this, anyway? A preview of... Eli, get out of here. All right, all right. Now, let's have it. What is this? A preview of a new play? <laughs> Boy, am I glad you're quitting lights out after all. Can't you hear him? Oh, hear who? Eli, behind you. Behind me what? What's the matter with you, anyway, Art? Don't you feel well? You keep staring back at me. It's a dream. It must be a dream. What's that dream? It must be a dream. Are you dream. Tight? What's the matter? The pink elephant's beginning to get... Help! 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 My brother! No, my brother! Let go of you! You think to my brother! No! 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 Right away, my brother. Please, send police, send police. My brother, my brother, my brother. Yeah. How much time we got to go on this ship yet, you? Oh, 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 hold it. Here comes Frank Sinatra again. Squad 39 and 48. Squad of Insurance and Ragwood. Drunk making a disturbance. Claims his brother ate by a monster. Squad 39 and 48. Squad of Insurance and Ragwood. Drunk claims blood to stop by a thing. Stay at the end of the night and 
Hey, it's true, officer. It's true. My brother, my own brother. I thought I saw it my own eyes. All right, all right. All right. Yeah, okay, you got... Now, take it easy, young fellow. You're in a bad case. I tell you, I'm not drunk. I'm as sober as you are. Now, don't get funny. You thick-headed fool. Look, it's there behind you. Huh? What? The thing, the monster. Look at it. Believe my brother. My oh, brother. I've heard of a seen snakes and pink elephants, but this is the first one I've seen this bad off, eh, Joel? Oh, you never can tell in the valley. There, this is a tool. You can't just see him. Can't just see him. Over there in the corner. Hey, hey, maybe we'd better take him down to the station and let him cool off in the can for a while, eh? Yeah. Stop yeah. staring me, the two of you. Why won't you believe me? Why won't you believe me? Hey, Clarence, maybe this guy's on the level. Oh, are you nuts, too? If something happened to his brother, there'd be someone around, wouldn't there? And there ain't nothing in this room. You, Gun, what do you mean? I thought of the monster. Seven days of seven nights. I see you, Joe, the guy's nuts. Let's find out who he is. What's your name, young fella? Yeah, what's your name? Quiet down now. What's your name? Oh, a dirt of that name. A fingered sister and grins at me. Why don't you see it and help me? Oh, Why don't you? Come on, come on now. What's your name? Let's have it. Opaler. Oh, what's your business? What do you do for a living? Well, radio. I, I write radio. What's the difference? Radio. Opaler. Say, ain't you the guy that writes them screwy lights out things Tuesday night? <laughs> Yes, help me. Please, please help That's me. That's your fault. Why, this is the guy that writes them ghost things I was telling you about, you know, over the radio. Obler, the guy who always makes his cops Irish. You get it? <laughs> it's one of them gags, one of them publicity gags. Hey. Oh, you infernal. Now, wait a minute, fellow. Watch your tongue. I tell you, it's not a gag. It's here, here in the room. It has took my brother and his... Hey. Can't you hear it? Can't you hear it? Huh? It's laughing. An infernal laugh. Listen to it. Listen to it. It is later than you oh, say. Okay, young fellow. If it ain't a gag, you better take a bro and go back to bed. Now, listen, you. We're going to hang around for a while, so take it easy. Come on, Joe. Let's get out of here. This no, no, wait. Who is this? Wait. Don't let me down. It's here, I tell you. It's here. Don't let me. Oh. What'll I do? What'll I do? i got to get out of here. Yeah. I've got to get out of here and find someone who believes. Oh, it won't let me out? No, no. Don't come near me. Don't come. Please, hey, come back. Come in. Come in. Oh. I was just riding by and I thought... No, no, Mercedes, get out of here. Get out. What? No, no. I thought the matter. What are you scaring me? Mercedes, believe me, you got to get out. you got to get out. No. No. Help. No. 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 Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hey, what's going on here? Did oh, we no. tell you to go to bed? Is that the way to act? We heard you screaming all the way down in the... Oh, no. Where did she come from? She hurt torn. Give me that gun, sir. That thing in the corner there. Won't you look at it? Won't you believe me? Give me that gun. Get away from me. The gun, I'll shoot it. I'll shoot it. Oh, no. Stand we are. Stand we are. Let's have a slug. Huh? You got it coming to you, that girl. They'll burn you for it. It's yours. My name's Clarence McMinn, sir. And I'd like to be the guy that pulls the switch. All right. Right in here, sir. You got five minutes. Yes, I know. I know. Oh, Miss Kimmy. I'll be waiting for you. I got here as soon as I could. Uh, looks bad over there. Very bad. What do you mean? I didn't do anything. I tell you, I didn't. Oh, yes, yes. I know, I know. But, uh, Obler, you can't do a thing like that and just walk away from it. Well, I'll explain it to you. I'll explain it to everyone a hundred times, a thousand times. Won't anyone believe me? Now, look here, Arch. I'm your attorney. I want to help you. A great number of people want to help you, and we certainly can't do a thing unless you cooperate. Yes, that's what I said, cooperate. What do you want me to do? Tell the truth. The whole truth. I told you. I told yes, you. Yes, yes. I know what you told me. A horrible thing that you conceived in your mind came to life and, uh, did a number of, uh, peculiar things. Uh, but, oh, see here, surely you don't think that even the most stupid jury on earth is going to believe that nonsense? You don't believe me. Well, I've heard many peculiar alibis from my radio clients in time, but... Well, listen, if you want to plead temporary... But I'm not insane. I'm not insane. I'm not then insane. Then let's hear a sane explanation of what happened that night. I told you. I told you everything just the way it happened. My brother came yes, home and... Yes, 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 I know. Well... Your brother came into the room and was eaten up by this monster and then that girl. Oh, what's the use? Apparently you want to die. I've tried so hard to make you understand. I've tried to make you understand that if you don't stop this infernal nonsense and hurry up and tell me the truth of what really happened, 
You'll either find yourself taking a one-way walk to the electric chair or wake up in a padded cell in an asylum for the criminally insane. What? The fact of the matter is they've already appointed a lunacy commission to pass on your case. Lunacy commission? Oh, see here, Arch. Wait. No, wait. Let me talk. Go right ahead. That's what I want you to do. Maybe I am insane. I don't know. First, I told myself it was nothing but a nightmare. That I'd wake up and find it had all been nothing but a weird dream that never really happened. But it's not a dream and no one will believe my story, not even you. But such an irrational story. How can you expect anyone to believe it? Now, take that part about your brother being devoured alive by this this monster. It happened. It happened just as I said it happened. It's common knowledge that your brother is pre-induction vacationing up north with your mother. He came back. You and they are coming back. I sent your brother a wire to come back and bring your mother home at once. They ought to be here today. My brother's dead. Well, that's your preposterous story. This this thing, this monster who's supposed to have committed all these crimes. Where is he? Where did he come from? Where has he gone to? I... I don't know. Did the police see him? No. Did anyone see him? No. Oh, Arch, Arch. If you're going to think up an alibi to save yourself, for heaven's sake, think up a better one than that one. I'm not trying to think up alibis. I'm just trying to explain what happened to you and maybe to myself. I haven't believed much during my life, except perhaps that somewhere there was a power that went beyond life and death. What happened to me isn't explainable in any terms that you and I... But, Mr. Gang, I tell you, it did happen. I thought of a monster for seven days and seven nights in my own mind. And like that prophet of the Middle Ages warned, the evil thing came to life, and yet only I could see it and hear it. And do you see and hear it now? No. That's what I can't quite understand. Perhaps the horrible thing only has life when I think about it intensely. <sighs> Intense? That's it. Yeah. It only has life when my thoughts give it life. Like an idea. Don't you see, Mr. Gang? Like an idea only exists when you think of it. Your thought gives it life. And that's the way it is with that terrible thing. Listen. 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 Do you hear him? There. There he is in the corner. What? I what? tell you, he's there. Don't you hear it? Fluttering and slobbering. I see it now, I see it. You think? I'm not afraid of you anymore, you hear me? I'm not afraid. I'll kill you, 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 I'll Tell you all, read your writers are crazy. I've had dealings with several of them. Gentlemen, no. Gentlemen, if you want to be so crazy, please, Dr. Shimmy, put down that bottle. Are we a lunatic commission or lunatics? And you too. I know how strongly you gentlemen feel about this matter, but after all, we must come to a decision on his mental status. As chairman of this lunatic commission, I feel that it is incumbent upon me to, shall I say, uh, summarize the facts as they have been placed before us. First, it is an established fact that a murder, and a very horrible murder, has been committed. The police officer has testified very conclusively that Arch Obler was there upon the scene of the crime, and that it was absolutely impossible for anyone else to have committed the murder. In other words, the man whose mental status we are to determine is a murderer. Consider further facts. Does he wear conventional shirts? Uh, no, 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 Another fact. Does he participate in uh, normal activities such as drinking, dancing, uh, fraternal orders, and similar uh, beneficial social activities? No, 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 no. I pile fact upon fact. Have you gentlemen ever listened to his play? Oh, yeah, yeah. Please. Please. Yeah, uh, uh, what, please. What are some of the distinctive features of these works? Voices. Mm. Strange voices. Strange voices. Uh, whispering voices. Uh, you know, that voices. gentleman always whispering voices. Voices. Yeah, yeah. Voices. Gentlemen, I am of the firm opinion that we are dealing with a very definite case of Dementia Braycock in its paranoidal form. But no, I I tell you all right. Right. <laughs> No, no, Arch. No. My time in an insane asylum. 
Ama ben söyle. 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 Dear, of course I do. Uh, Eli would only get back. Eli? But I told you, Eli would... You're like the others, you don't believe me, now I know you don't. Oh, you will believe, I'll make you believe. Sing. Sing wherever you are, listen to me. I think of you, here I think of you, I give you life, I give you life. Oh. You hear, Mother? You hear it does exist, it does? No, no, don't get so excited. There, Mother. Mother. It's right behind you, turn, see, believe. You say, Mother. You say it. I'm not insane. I'm not insane. No. My mother. Sing, my mother. No. No. Not my mother. 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 Not my I finally brought up the plot line, and believe me, it's quite a brainstorm. I die. Sure, sure, it's my final broadcast, so why not? No, I'm not gagging. Listen to me. You know, it's all about a monster that I conceived in my own little bitty mind, and it comes to life. <laughs> Honestly, I haven't had a coke in hours. It's going to be one of those, you know, crazy stories inside of a story. Now, listen. The way I've got it figured out is this. Now, I'm supposed to be sitting here... Thinking of this horrible monster, and suddenly I turn around and there it is, see? And my young brother comes in and this monster eats him up alive, and then Mercy in the Cambridge comes in and she... Wait a minute, wait a minute, Joan, hold it for a minute. I think someone came in. I imagine it's Bernie, I'll see who... Arch Obler bringing you another in our series of stories of the unusual. And once again, we caution you. These lights out stories are definitely not for the timid soul. So we tell you calmly and very sincerely, if you frighten easily, turn off your radio now. I... I know. It's Diane I am, Father Donahue. And old as I am, I'm not ready to die until you uh, come closer, Father, and hear my miserable confession. You know me as a good woman of the village. Yet uh, I've heard what you say. There's no finer old woman in all the islands than the widow than elves. But that's not so, Father Donahue. And if I'm to meet all my old friends in the island of paradise, then hear me out and pray for me. You know, my son, Thomas and Patty, born on the same cold winter's night they were. And the firstborn, Thomas, was as good as an angel in paradise. But the second, the one I named Patty, was evil from the moment he took his first breath of God's good air. 
It was Thomas that carried the load of the family on his back. Fishing from early to late. The petty. Oh, that race. Drinking and brawling and running from work as if the devil himself was pulling him away. I pray to the good God every night that some goodness come into the man's heart. But with every year he grew worse. Stealing what his crooked tongue couldn't talk away from honest men. Ah, but his brother Thomas. He repaid me for all the trouble. A good boy. And when he came to me with the words that he was to marry Eileen, the hearting me sang for the good God always meant for the two of them to be together. Ah, how I remember the day of the wedding. The sun shining. And the sky and the sea smooth as a baby's cheek. I was a happy... Little known of the horror of what was to come. Oh, it was a happy morning. So. Oh, listen to the mother. Did you ever hear a happier sound in all creation? Don't they be happy, Thomas? It's not every day that such a blessed marriage comes in the island. Ah, oh, the prettiest girl in all the blast is waiting to be your bride as soon as the sun starts setting. My bride. Uh, oh, Mother, that's a grand word. I'm happy for you, my son. I wonder where Patty can be. Patty. Yes, he isn't around. You know where he is. Oh, that's right. It'll be a better wedding without him. Oh, no, Mother, don't say things like that. After all, he's your son and my oh, brother. I've got a sorrow in my heart. This is drinking and brawling. Paddy, you did come. Speak of it, differently. And why shouldn't I be here? It's an honest stranger said a welcome at your wedding. Oh, no, Paddy, that's not the way to talk. There's food and drink and... No, wait a minute. I've got more important things to do than to be filling your belly. Listen to me, Brother Thomas. Is your head that full of weddings that it can't get a chance of making a sound richer than a Yankee? What do you mean? Yes, speak up, Paddy. What devilment are you up to now? Devilment's nothing. It's honest money I'm, I'm talking about. And may they make pipes and tobacco beat me on wake if I'm not telling you the truth. I'm listening, Paddy. I hear what you have to say. Do you remember the hulk of a ship that was wrecked off in East Nabra a bit ago? Well? But I went there yesterday to see if there was anything worth having. Oh, listen to me, brother. In the bottom of a pool no deeper than this room. Is lying enough box of copper and brass to make you and me the richest men on the island. What? Ah, you can believe your ears. Wouldn't you rather bring the bride a pocketbook filled with gold sovereigns than the empty leather you've got now? But, Paddy, I... Ah, I wish you, Mother, you talk to the man. But if it's in the sea, it'll wait until after the wedding. Ah, wait, will it? And with those inish boats sailing out around the place, I tell you, it's now or never. And may my sword to the devil if I'm not saying two words. Uh, Thomas, it would be nice to have a bit of money in the house. Yes. Well, then what are you waiting for? You've got a boat big enough to handle the stuff, and I'll be there to help you. And in three hours, you can be back here dancing. Oh, it's Eileen. Let her have the word, but you stay or go. Stay or go where, Mother Dinell? What's going on, Thomas? Well, uh, you see, Eileen... Ah, I... you're the day short. Let me say it. Eileen, there's a fortune in brass and copper boats waiting for us in water no deeper than a man's neck over off in East Nabro. And Tommy here thinks you'd be fool enough to say no to his going. But, but must he go now? The sea doesn't wait. He'd be back in three hours, Eileen. Yeah, I just think, Eileen, you'd have it just for every day of the week. Do you want to go? We could build a new house with the money. Mother Donnell, do you think Thomas should go now? I mean, with all them, aren't they? Well, we're so poor, and Thomas, young as he is, so worn and weary from work. Maybe this is God's blessing, a gift from heaven for putting our faith in him who watches over all of us. God's blessing is right. A hundred pounds, and we'll be kings of the island. Come on now. We can take the side path down the creek. Wait, brother. Eileen, is it your wish? I'd be a poor wife to you, Tom. If I stood in your way of making a living before I'm My darling. Ah, there'll be time enough for that now when we get back. Come on, Thomas. Let's get out of here. Hurry back to me, my dearest. The sea will take me to our good fortune and the sea will bring me back. Uh, out this way, Thomas. Come on. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm here to wedding, darling. God, go with you. Thomas! Yes, yes. I'll be back in three hours, mother. As rich as a Yankee. Bye. Oh, Eileen. Oh, little baby, why should you cry? Thomas has told the sea so many times. Why should you cry this time? Oh, well, little no. I'm frightened. Frightened? And tell me, why should you be frightened? I don't know, but when that door closed behind him, it seemed as if the waters of the sea were closing over. Oh, Mother did no, oh, Miss Claude. Soon, Father Donahue, Eileen and I left the dancing and the fiddling behind and climbed the long path up to the top of the cliff so our eyes could see far out over the waters. 
And all the time, Mylene kept crying that she'd never see Thomas again. That she'd never see Thomas again. Oh, 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 stop trying and say the things you're saying, girl. Simply not difficult to do with people's work. Oh, I haven't climbed at this pass for a minute. It's a little too steep for me, old bones. Thomas, where are you? Oh, now stop that, girl. I Thomas has found so much copper and brass, it's taken them longer than they thought. Oh, Thomas wouldn't come back like he would. No, well, Paddy would if there was a shilling extra to be made, and he thought Thomas ain't would with that dark uh, kind of ear. Ah, oh. ah, oh, the last gift. I know we'll see them. They're both weighed down with good fortune. Eileen! Eileen, stay away from the edge. You'll go over the cliff. Oh, Mother Janelle, to the west. Hush, to the west where they went. The water. Oh, the mother that wind. Where did it come from? Out oh, of the west where he was. But, but in all my years, such a wind has never been before. The water. Look at it swirling and tossing before the wind. It's dead. No. No, no. Stop saying that. It's not dead. My comments. Eileen! Eileen, come back here. Oh, that was a time, Father Donahue. The wind grew wilder and wilder. In a minute, the sea was pounding at the base of the cliff. And the girl shrieking she wanted to die with Tom. And me frightening her back from the edge and praying to the good God to give me old arms the strength to hold her back until she came to her senses. Ah, uh, none of us got a wink of sleep till the light of the morning. Oh, that wind. I can hear it now. Snarling and talking. A boat, a boat, your son oh, to the west. Why, my son. Aye, aye, come on. Dead. No, no, the boat's coming and there's living hands on the oars. Come on. Oh, there's a scar on my knees. I thank you for your mercy. Mother Janelle, I heard someone say. Oh, Mother Janelle. Oh, oh, I Eileen, the merciful God has brought them back. Oh. Come on, quick. They're trying to get into land for me now. Oh, Mother Janelle, quick. No. Oh. No way, child. Your shawl. Your shawl there. Now give me your arm. Oh, my old lady. Oh, I can hardly walk. Yes, yes. Lean on me. Oh. Yes, yes, I'm moving fast as I can. It's hard. It's hard to get against this wind. It wind. Let him live. You bless it for the life of one. And I bless it for the life of two. Good neighbors. Good neighbors, let us through. My son. Let us through. Let us through. Oh, I can see nothing. The waves and the dark. I need you to see. Oh, yes. Yes, Mother Janelle. I'll see them. I swear. Where put it out to me, girl? Where? Oh, the day uh, Follow my thing. Oh. Oh. Mary, they're yes. coming back. Yes, I see the boat. Oh, blessed boat. I see it. Praise God, I see it. One. There's only one. No. Oh. Yes. Now, what are you saying? Thomas. Can you? Mother, can come back? The waves. Uh, the bird, right? There's only one in the boat. The waves. The boat's in. Oh, oh, Thomas. Oh, no. No, Eileen, wait for me. My son. My son, take me to him. Oh, yes, yes. Forgive me. Come, I'll help you. Now, good girl, I'm good girl. Oh, which one? Which one? Thomas, I know it. Thomas, yes. I know it. Yes, Thomas, the good Thomas, he lives. Stand aside, everybody. Let the widow yes. and the girl through now. Yes. Let them through, yes. Mr. Mullins. Yes. I know it. My son, my son, which one? Well, well, I'm back, Mother. Are you, are you through to see me? Harry. Oh, Jesus. Stand by now. You, Harry. Yes. Yes, me. Ain't I got a right to live? Tell me. Tell me quick. Where, where is my son? Where's Thomas? Tell me, Penny. Where is my Thomas? Where do you think he is, old woman? Dead at the bottom of the sea. Hi, Father Donahue. That was what he told me. My good Thomas was dead at the bottom of the sea. Dead. The good Thomas dead and Paddy, Paddy the evil and the lies. Ah, oh, it wasn't right, Father. And in the days and nights that followed, I cried to God, Why did you do it? Why? Why did the sea take my dear Thomas from the boat and leave Paddy? Was there no reward on earth for goodness and sweetness of soul? And in the seventh night of my sorrow, there came an answer. I was lying on my bed. Outside the sea was singing and whispering. My window was open, and I could hear the sea talking as I lay there, crying. Crying for my life. I do not Oh, oh. oh. 
Do not cry, Mother. What? Mother. I, I heard a voice. You heard me, Mother. Tell me the voice. Oh, no. No, it's some wildness in my weary head. Mother, I am so weary. You must listen. Oh, dear Scott. Why do you do this to me? My son is dead. Dead in the sea. Why do you bring me the memory of his voice? Mother, mother, believe me. If I could only see you, I would believe. Oh, no. The horror the sea made of me. Wind and wave and grinding rock against my flesh. Oh, I wouldn't care, my son. Just let me see that it is you and not my own voice speaking in the head. Oh, mother, you don't know what you ask. But if there is no other way, close your eyes until I give you a word to open them. I've, I've closed them. Now, now open, mother. And have no fear, I beg you. Oh. This was oh. Thomas. Oh, no. Mother, why did he murder me? Murder? The sea would come. We reached the pool where he set the copper and the brass lay. I stripped off my clothes and dove under. Oh. And when I tried to come up for another breath of air... Oh, Mother, he wouldn't let me do it. Oh, no. With his hand, he held me under. My hands, they tore at his arm. But he held me down. Down until at last I screamed for mercy. The water filled my mouth. My lungs and killed me. My own brother killed me. And that is why I tore myself out of the sea. I want to know why he did it. Mother. Why? I cannot rest in peace until I know and understand. You tell me. Oh, oh, speak, Mother. What gain could come to him for such a horror? I, I do not know. Oh, believe me, my son. I do not know. Then I must go back. I cannot stand this. Thing. Oh, my good Thomas. Look at this. What was Thomas de Mare's face? <laughs> Look at it and give me your oath you will not tell my Eileen or my brother of this night. Oh, but I... Your oath, Mother. They must not know. You hear me? They must not know. I swear, Thomas. Oh, merciful one, this pain. I go, Mother. Where? Back to the sea. Oh, and, and will we, will we ever meet again, my son? Yes. The day I find out why he made me drown, I will return, Mother. I will return. Thomas, my son, come back. Oh, oh my son. My son. But he was gone, Father Donahue. Gone back to his nameless grave at sea. Then, then it happened. Petter talked his way into the good graces of the girl. Simple little Eileen. What did she know of the evil of men? A devil Paddy and my good Thomas's Eileen. Ah, oh, it took the life out of me. And made me long for the quiet of my grave. And then, then came the day of the wedding. Again the fiddler was playing. Again the good people of the islands were happy. I alone was sad, weeping. Weeping at what I mean. Oh, Mother Danelle, why do you sit here apart from all the rest and weep? I, I'm not weeping, girl. For weeks you've been so sad. Can't you find a little joy in your heart for this day of my marriage to your own son? My, my son, I do not love him as I did this time. But Thomas himself told Patty that if he died, he wished that Patty would care for him. M- Mother Danelle, what is it? Your face so strange. Now he knows. I just remembered. Now he knows. Oh. Who knows? What are you saying? <laughs> there you are, my little bride to be. <laughs> uh, why waste your wedding day with this old woman? 
Mother of mine, though she'd be, her face is sour enough to curdle milk. Come on away now. No, no, wait, Patty. Mother Danelle, you must tell me. What is it that makes you stare at Patty with such an awful ah, look? That's the look she's always had. <laughs> oh, look how the sun glints on the sea. Ah, it's a day for a king. And I'm a king marrying the girl I've always wanted. Come kiss me, Eileen. Kiss me so that all shall see me. Kiss me the prettiest bride in all Ireland. No, please. Kiss me. Let the sky and the sea. Oh, and the... Mother Danelle. What did you make that sound for, old woman? Who takes it? Now then, Ooh. speak up, Mother. Why did you shriek like that? The sea. What of the sea? What are you putting your bony finger at out there? What are you... Look, at the water's edge. Say, what is something's coming out of the sea? Oh, look, there's something's coming out of the sea. Yes, right. I, I see it now. Oh. It's a seal, oh. that's what it is. It's a seal. Oh. Where's the club? I'm looking. It's not a seal. Huh? It's a man. Look, man. Bones. Just bones. Let's get on. Eileen, Eileen, do not look. Do not look. Ah, oh. oh, blessed Mary, she's fainted. She will not see. What? What? What is it? I can't move. I cannot move. No. You cannot move, my brother. You cannot move. That, that, that voice. Bones and little flesh. And yet you know the voice. Thomas. Thomas. Your brother Thomas. Come back again. No. Because now he knows. No. Now he knows. No. Not what? Why you murdered me? Your flesh and blood. I heard it from your own lips. You wanted my Eileen always. That's why you did it. Your clever tongue can no longer save your brother of mine. I have come a painful way to get you. No, 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 you won't get me dead thing. No, I'll get away. I'll run, I'll run. And so he ran, Father Donahue. He turned and ran up, up the path that led to the top of the cliff. And behind him, slowly stubborn with the pain that tore at his dead bones, climbed my dead Thomas after him. And after Thomas, dragging my old bones, I went. Ah, oh, for they were my sons. And I had to see that right was done. Up, up. Up until at last, Perry stood on the very edge, the sea five hundred feet below, shrieking, yelling, and wailing. He stood there shrieking at that horrible thing, his monstrous eyes. No, 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 thing, stay back, stay back. You phoned the bill, stay back. I back. come to no. you, my brother. No, no. I come no. for you. No. no. <laughs> he fell. He fell. Mother, see, he didn't get me. Those rotten bones gave way beneath him. He didn't get me, Mother. He fell. Mother, what are you going to do? Mother. Mother! Over the cliff, Paddy went, turning and twisting, and into the sea where the water covered him over. <laughs> When the others of the village came up there at last, I told them that the old bones of Thomas had done it. Had clutched Paddy close to and thrust him over. Oh, Father Donahue, listen. It was I that day that final push had sent the evil son of mine to his death. Thomas tried and failed before he had his last. Measure of revenge. So I did it, Father. I. I gave Patty to her life. And I gave him death. Oh. Is there any forgiveness in heaven for what I did? Later than...
when you faint. Arch Oblers lights out everybody. We bring you stories of the supernatural and the supernormal, dramatizing the fantasies and the mysteries of the unknown. We tell you this frankly so that if you wish to avoid the excitement and tension of these imaginative plays, we urge you calmly but sincerely to turn off your radio now. Who among us, and you're included, has not had the dream at one time or another of being superior to his or her fellow beings, to jump higher, to run faster, to dance better, to be more beautiful. We've all run the gamut, all of us, at various ages, of standing out from the crowd of humanity. That's what our story is about today, being different in a very special manner. And now, if you haven't already done so, turn off your lights now. But, my dear Mr. Finn, $5,000. $5,000. $5,000. What do you think you're doing, bidding at an auction sale? I am bidding for your services. And if a $5,000 retainer isn't enough, why name your own price? I'm not here as an individual. I'm the representative of a group of casualty insurance companies who handle practically all of the burglary insurance in this entire area. Well, if you're that important, talk important money. $10,000 cash. Very well. Uh, I'll write you a check. Fenn Detective Agency. F-E-N-N. -N. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm. Half a million dollars stolen in broad daylight and no witnesses. Very clever criminal, whoever he is. But surely you don't believe only one man has committed all these crimes. Whenever there is greatness, even in crime... The answer is a man. One man. Twenty-five places robbed both sides of State Street. Twenty-five stores robbed in the space of 30 minutes, and you talk of one man? He's very clever. No one man could rob 25 places, spreading over a distance of three blocks in the space of 30 minutes. No. Of course not. Banks and department stores and loan companies. Cash registers cleaned out. And not a clue, not a witness. The devil alone knows what this is all about. Devil alone. City morgue. Oh, hello, Chief. Yeah, he's been here two days in a row. Yeah, all he looks at is the bodies of the hit and run. Hey, listen, Chief. Here he comes now. Yeah. Okay, I'll try to find out. Yeah. Hiya, Mr. Finn. Early today, ain't you? Quickly, show me the new ones. Yeah, sure. Well, why not? The same kind? Yes. Okay. Uh, this one's name is... Uh, it's on the tag here, Morrison something. Relgas ain't claimed him yet. Look at him. Smashed up pretty, ain't he? He never knew what struck him. I'll say he didn't. The way that skull... Well, I bet you he went out just like that. I'm no longer interested in this one. Where's the next? Coming up. Wait till I put this fella back on ice. Well, let me see. Where'd I put the dame? Oh, yeah, here she is. Kid. Whoever the rat was, his hair must have bust the front end of his crate. Look at her. Yeah. Ain't much of her left to tell who she was, is there? Only identification on her was her first name in a book. Let me see, uh, Libby. Yeah, that's what it was, Libby. Gosh, if this was my girlfriend and any hit and run rat did this, I'd find him even if I had... Hey, Mr. Finn, what's the matter? What are you laughing about? It ain't funny. The girl's face, it, it smashed her. What are you laughing about? I know... Now I know. You. Hey, 
you. Hold on there. I want to talk to you. Are you talking to me, copper? Oh, wise guy, huh? Listen, you, what's the idea of cross-examining everybody in this neighborhood? Now, just a minute before you start using that nightstick, you better have a look at this. Why? Why, a private detective? Oh, brilliant. Well, no. how was I supposed to know that... Well, you know it now. Tell me this. What do you know about the hit-and-run cases in this district? Oh, that's bad, sir. But what can I do? Drunken rats driving without lights and giving no warning? We'll get him tonight, sir. Believe me, we will. What do you mean? There's going to be ten squad cars touring this district. Just a moment. One question. Uh, have you been hearing any peculiar noises on your beat? Noises like, uh, uh, like an airplane motor when there wasn't anything in the sky? <laughs> Go on, now. You're kidding me. Say, look at the time. I better get moving on me beat or the sergeant will be shooting his mouth off. Anything else I could tell you? Yes. Let's rest where we're in front of is it a good place to eat? Yeah. Bill Lewis's place is okay. He's off in Washington, but his wife's running it. Nothing like the Ritz, but it's okay. Well, I'll be seeing you. You're mistaken. What'll you have, sir? Nice dinner? Uh, coffee. Piece of nice fish pie. Apple, peach, cherry. Apple. Yes, sir, right away. I beg your pardon. Oh. Where did you come from? I followed you in. I wish to speak with you. I don't want to buy anything. I am not selling. Just like you, I am asking questions. Eh? I have been watching you. All afternoon, you have been asking many questions. What's that here? I am a Bellini, Dr. Bellini. I live in this neighborhood. I am interested in whatever goes on in it. Oh, glad to meet you, Doctor. Maybe you can tell me. Have you heard any unusual noises during the late afternoon and evening hours? Noise you couldn't quite locate or explain? Noises? What noises? You are a detective. Why do you ask that? As a physician, I pride myself on my powers of observation. You are a detective, eh, my friend? Yes. Then come with me. Do not raise your voice now. This gun in my pocket will kill you. Walk slowly toward the door. Make no noise. Now, open the door and step outside. I advise discretion. I will be close behind you. Now, walk beside me down the street. <laughs> A gun in your side and you laugh? Why do you laugh? Tell me. I've been looking for you, Dr. Bellini. Yeah? Why? I must know your secret. I must. Very well. But there is a price to pay. Price? What is your price? Death. So... Now we will not be disturbed, Mr. Uh... Mark Fenn. Mark Fenn. Mark Fenn. The man who is willing to die to learn my secret. I'll take my chances. Just tell me. How did you do it? But first I will ask you questions. You are either a very clever man, Mr. Fenn, or a very lucky one. How did you suspect it was only one man? I knew. It had to be one man. But how did you correlate the missing money and the dead in the streets? Thirty minutes to collect half a million and cover twenty-five stores. I knew you'd have to move fast. I figured someone would get hurt. You are very clever. You did do it, didn't you? Come, I will show you. You will be the first to know. And the last. Here. Sit here. Yes, yes. Now, what do you see in my hand, Mark Fenn? I... Uh, a bottle. It's uh, full of oil. Not oil, you blind fool. Power. The key to the world. Listen to me, Mark Fenn. One drop of this in the world is mine. You believe, Mark Fenn? You believe what I tell you? But, but what does that stuff do? You, you, you've got to tell me. Speed. That's what it gives. Speed. Faster, faster, faster. Every atom in me faster. You do believe, Mark Fenn. You've got to believe. But, but what? I, I, I don't understand it. What does that stuff do to you? Oh, you fool. Why don't you listen? But, uh... Speed. That's what it gives me. Speed. Every physical process, every mental activity, it speeds them up 10, 20 times the normal rate. Faster, faster. Every molecule. Listen. The average man walks three miles an hour. One drop of this 
And I walk 60 miles an hour. Now you know my secret. A chemical which speeds up my activities until I am a, a god among men. A drop of this, one drop. And I walk and I run and I talk and I think 20 times faster than any other man in the world. Oh, no, no, that, that can't be. No? Then watch. I drink. <sighs> Doctor. Dr. Bellini. Oh, where are you, Doctor? Where are you? <laughs> Bellini. Bellini. Bellini, what are you talking about? What are you saying? I, I don't understand. Stop it. Stop it, I say. Stop it. Bellini. You went away. Where? What happened to you? Why do you talk like that? I told you... All physical, mental processes speed up. Wait a second. Chemical effect will wear off completely. Uh, that stuff, it, it makes you talk fast, is that it? <sighs> there. Effect is worn off. I'm back to normal rate again. Where did you go? Where? To prove to you that what I say is true. Look what I have in my hand. Diamonds. Diamond necklace. Where did you... From the window of that jewelry store three blocks away. You... You were there and back in these few seconds? Twenty times faster than any man can run, I ran in those few seconds. Twenty times faster than any man can think, I thought in those few seconds. Now. Now, do you believe, Mark? It was you moving at a hundred miles an hour that knocked down those people and killed them. Was you moving so fast? They were not hurt. Well, they were hurt, but not you. Yes, 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 it was I. It was you moving so fast they couldn't see you who took that half million in cash from those stones. Yes, I. Me too. You? Yes, me. All my life I wanted Bellini. The power you've got now, Bellini, I want it too. But why? Why should I share it with you? Because I can help you. Yes, that's it. I can help you. There's so much to do. You, you can rule the world, but you cannot conquer it alone. You'll need help, and I'll need help. You hear me, Bellini? I'll help you. I'll do anything you say, but you must let me join you. But the dream of all my life coming true. Power like... Like God. Let me join you, Bellini. Let me. Yes? I need a man like you. Together we will help the world. And I say to you that this great and unprecedented crime wave which is sweeping our city is due entirely to the unholy alliance of crime and politics. Sweep the culprits out of office. And I tell you that our streets will be safe and I tell you, Mr. Mayor, I'm doing everything I can do. I've sworn in a thousand extra deputies. I've got the force with the trip. And I tell you, fellow citizens, this alliance of the underworld and their masters can never be broken until we, the people, take matters into our own hands. Like the vigilantes of old, we must rise in our wrath and drive these vampires out of our fair city. <laughs> <laughs> A revolution is plot. Unholy alliance of crime and politics. <laughs> oh, we have done well in these ten days, eh, Mark Fenn? <laughs> oh, I say we have ten million dollars. Nobody in the world ever collected money that fast. It was good letting you join me. I told All the places where money is, you know. But it's not money alone we want, Bellini. Oh, I know, I know. We have been just, uh, how do you say it, uh, testing our wings. And now we're ready to go. Yes. 
You concentrate that my chemical is ready. Today we have taken the city, the more of the world. The world. But now, while the city we have left behind us boils in the madness we have brought to it, you and I, we will rest, eh, friend? <laughs> you laugh again. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I was thinking of the fun I had this morning. <laughs> oh. You mean when we liquidated your enemy? <laughs> Dead. Every mother son of them. Everyone that ever laughed at Yes, dead, every one of them. And you go on to new triumphs. Uh, they never knew what hit them. That's the only trouble with moving so fast, Polina. You mean when you struck them at 50 times the normal rate? Yes, it was like hitting them with a six-inch shell. The skull smashed in like empty eggs. And you are disappointed because your revenge was over too quickly, eh, Mark Fan? Yes. What if I were to tell you that my new concentrate, the one we will use tomorrow when we arrive at the seat of your government in Washington, what if I were to tell you that this new concentrate is infinitely more powerful than the one we have been using? More powerful? Well, how can that be? Listen, the one we have been using increases the physical and mental rate 20 times, is that not so? Yes, talk, walk, run, and think 50 times faster. So there you have it. With the new concentrate, talk, walk, think, and run an infinite number of times faster than all. You... You, you mean there's no limit? No limit. We move faster? As fast as we like. Say, 200, 300, 500, the limit will be our desires. A blur of light here, there, the next place. Masters of men. Because compared to us, men are snails who crawl while we run. Masters of men. Look, I brought the bottle. The new concentrate. It looks the same. Yes. Shall we try some, Mark friend? I... I don't know. We must try it sometime. Yes. It is the same basic formula as the other. Sure. I do not ask you to do what I will not do myself. We will take equal amounts and compare reactions. How much will it? Uh, two drops each. I have two medicine droppers ready. Yes. The moment we swallow the drops, we will move toward the... Um, you see that barn across the field? Yes. We meet there and see how fast we can move. You know your drops, Mark, then. Huh? I, uh, I... Surely you're not afraid, my friend. Afraid? Me? Well, no, of course not. Give me those drops. Hmm. We'd bring together. Yes. <sighs> oh. Mark... Mark Fenn... What? What? Mark Fenn. Bellini. What? What happened? I... I am not quite sure. The... The, the barn. We're lying by the barn. We... We did get here. Mark Fenn, your clothes. My clothes? Well, I'm naked. I, I too. Mark Fenn, listen. We moved so quickly through the air, our clothes were torn off. Yes. Then you concentrate infinitely more powerful. We moved through the air at a tremendous rate, hundreds of miles. Lenny. What? Your lips, they're not moving, and yet I hear you. Your lips, they do not move either. And yet I hear you, too. That cannot be. For, what is it, Bellini? Our reactions. The concentrate has speeded them up so intensely we read each other's thoughts. No, no, do not move. Why not? The concentrate, it was too powerful. We must lie quietly until its effects wear off. Yes, but... Berlin. Uh, Fan, why are you looking at me like that? Your face. My... my face? Something's happening to it. What? Speak up. What is wrong with my face? What... Yours. What? Your face, creases in it, lines. Uh, and yours, that's what's happening to yours. 
bleeding. I feel bleeding. What's happening? Tell me. Age. That is it. Age. Age? Age. We are aging. We are aging. Aging. What are you talking they about? Concentrate. Our physical reactions, they have been speeded up too much. Tell me, what's that got to do with... Listen to me. The concentrate, it has speeded up our life processes to infinity. Every second is aging us a year. Every second. No. No, I'm a young man, Bellini. You're lying. I'm not turning older. I'm not. I'm not. We are dying, my friend. Dying. Dying. No, no, you lie, Bellini. I won't die. I won't die. <laughs> Yet the solution works on in his flesh. Decay. No, 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 I cannot die. Master of men, I cannot die. Master of... Arch Obler bringing you another in our series of stories of the unusual. And once again, we caution you, these lights out stories are definitely not for the timid soul. So we tell you calmly and very sincerely, if you frighten easily, turn off your radio now. Oh, no, no, doctor. Do not even think such a thing. Come, come this way. In here, doctor. 
my hands tremble. No liquid, no green. If that only gives her a little more of life, my hands must be sure. Oh, oh. Nico, deep into her heart. Oh. No, no, you must live only a few seconds more oh. until I... No, it will never work. My experiments, foolishness, the reaction on the mice, only the illusions of my hopes. And to do what I've done to this old woman. Her dying flesh. Her pulse almost gone. Oh, forgive me, old friend. In your death. No. Not dead. Yes. Uh, Sheep are uh, red. Uh, Eyes are uh, So uh, bright. Uh, so fresh. So young. The heart. Daughter. Daughter. No. Daughter. No. It cannot be. No. Doctor Miller, no. what is it? What? No. Doctor, there's the old woman. There's Adelina. Who? It is young I. Who? I. Adelina. Look at me. My arms. Warm. Live. My cheeks. I can feel them. Wrong. Oh, like they were years ago. She has made me young. She did it. She. Me, old Adelina. Young. Dying old and young again. My friend. Oh, Doctor, all the states will know of this miracle. My you have conquered death. We shall live forever. Oh, no. What have I done? What is this? What do you want? Uh, doctor, it is I, Frank. What oh, such news? He is coming here. Hmm? I tell you, he comes here. The mayor is bringing him. He refused to wait until morning. And who is this impatient one that has to see me at midnight? It is. It is. His Excellency. His Excellency? Yeah. Frank, what are you saying? I tell you, it is His Excellency. Oh, his last name. I never try to remember names. His picture, you, you see his picture everywhere. He is coming here, Doctor, to see you. The mayor is bringing him. Thank, thank you, Finn. Thank you. Oh, no, no, I tell the truth, Doctor. The great one has heard of the miracle of Adelina. What are you saying? Ah, the miracle. There is a resurrection from the grave. I hear him talking to the mayor. He is coming to see you. Ah, ah there. You see, I tell you the truth. Open up. Open up in there. Oh, you going to open the door? What else is there to do? Open it, sir. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what an honor. What an honor. Oh, right. Oh, yes. 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 Oh,
know that she was worn out, aged, dying. Now she's young again. Speak, and speak plainly. How did you do it? And if I tell you? If you tell me. My dear doctor, this is your house? Yes. Your experiments in that room? My laboratory. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Your Excellency. Come here. Yes, Your Excellency. Open that door. I want Your Excellency. I want. Into your laboratory, my fine doctor. I follow. The rest of you stay out here. Now we will be quite alone. So, now we can speak plainly. Ah, so this is where you do your work, hmm, my fine doctor? Yes. Uh, what have we here? Well, mice. Little white mice. How charming. I use them in my experiments. And what are your experiments? The hereditary factor in cancer. Cancer? So you persist in lying to me. Doctor, they tell me you are a very clever woman. Yet I assure you, you will be most stupid if you persist in keeping the truth from me. I, I am not a violent man. So I ask you very calmly to be sensible and speak freely. Now then, the miracle of youth. How did you do it? I, I am not quite sure myself. That is no answer. Well, there are other methods. Mr. Mayor. You want me, Your Excellency? Come here. Yes, yes. Anything you say, Your Excellency. Mr. Mayor, how old are you? Why, uh, Your Excellency, I'm not quite sure. In my fifties, I believe. All right, you will do. Bear your arm. My arm? You heard me. All right, Doctor. Give him the injection. In injection? Me? Oh, well, kindly you... shut your mouth. You heard my order, Doctor. Do as I say. The injection... To him? Yes, yes, to him. I spoke plainly enough. But I can't do that. Why not? You have more of the liquid. Yes, but don't you understand? It's, it's permanent reactions on the human mechanism. I, I don't know that... And so I, I dare not use it. But that woman, she is young. Yes, but, but who knows what... Other... All right. All right. That's quite enough. Doctor, I have come a long way to investigate a rumor. Now I am here, and you will do what I say. If I refuse? Do not speak like a child. I am not a violent man. And yet, doctor, it would be a pity to lose your life work, hmm? Now, do not stand there. I am growing quite impatient. Yes, and the mayor, too, grows impatient. Oh, Your Excellency, what are you going to do to me? I am an old Hold man. your mouth and bear your arm, you old fool. Well, doctor. I am ready. Excellent. Oh, Hold your tongue, I tell you. Proceed, Doctor. Oh. It will not hurt, Albert. So, how simple. The needle in, you press the plunger. It is done. How do you feel, my friend? Yes, yes. How, how is it, old man? What's going on inside of you? I... I look, his flesh... Begins to glow like hers. The wrinkle's gone. He's back straightening. It happened again. A miracle. Speak, man. Speak. Your Excellency. My, my head. It hurts. My blood rushing through my veins. Doctor, why do you look at me so? My voice sounds so strange in my ears. Look. Look in the mirror ahead of you, you old fool. Yes. No, it cannot be. My face, young. I'm young again. Doctor, look at me. Young again. Young again. I'm young again. Young again. Oh, my bottle. Oh, look. I jump. I dance. And let me out of here. Everyone shall see. Yes, go, go. Wait. Wait, everyone. Look, I'm young. I'm young again. She made me young. So, it makes them young again. Does it? Are you blind? Didn't you see it just as I saw it? Wrinkled flesh, young, twisted back straight. I tell you, a gift to the state from heaven. Oh, hell. <laughs> All science is mad, and all scientists are madmen. I have often said that. Only we who think with our blood think clearly and recognize our destiny. I don't understand. You will receive many honors for this, Doctor. Oh, but first, you have kept an accurate record of your experiments? Yes. May I ask where? Notebook. This. Excellent. In the name of the state, I asked you to give it to me. To you? Yes. What would you do with it? I told you. There are some of us who recognize our destiny. I recognize this as mine. What? With this power in my possession, think. Think what wonder I can perform. An army of youth, everlasting youth. An oh. army invincible. Oh, no. Old men young and young men forever young. An army without end sweeping the earth. And I, yes, 
I, the leader? No. No, you cannot use it for that. Cannot? Ah, yes, I understand. You are thinking that there is another leader. Well, Doctor, at this moment I can speak quite frankly with you. Yes, there is a leader. And they bow their heads to him, the masses. But I will tell you this. It was my brains, my catchwords, my slogans that taught them to look on him as the invincible. And so, what they are shall for is really a man who exists only in me. <laughs> now perhaps I can take my rightful place. He's an emotional old woman, Leland. While I, I know the wonder and the power of the soft word. With your elixir of youth to tempt men, I shall become quite invincible. With an army invincible. You do not speak? All right. Then do give me the notebook. You, you cannot make men young to kill. Make them young to live. The notebook, Doctor. No, I will not give it to you. My work has been to preserve life, not to destroy it. The notebook? No, you can't have it. Not for soldiers, do you hear me? Not for soldiers. As you wish, Doctor. I told you, I am not a violent man. Good night. Head off. Yes, Your Excellency. Go in there. She has a notebook in her hand. Bring it to me quickly. Yes, Your Excellency. What a pity. The good doctor. She has committed suicide. <laughs> Your regiment, General, they do not quite know what is happening to them, and... Eh? It does not matter, Your Excellency. They obey orders. Come, let us go into your office. As you say. Now then, we can speak most comfortably. How many men have been treated? Fifty picked ones. You are satisfied with the result? It was beyond belief. And so, you will join me? Anything you say. Uh, when does it happen? He gives one of his infernal orations next week in the old hall. With you and the others to help me, I assure you his old womanish ravings will end right there. You'll speak of others. You doubt they will join me? Oh, no. no. All men will follow you. Naturally. To think that you should have made such a discovery. I sometimes surprise myself. And you alone know the formula? Yes. That is why I am so sure of you and the others. It will be most pleasant to know the delights of youth forever, my friend. Do you, uh, have you taken the injection yet? I? No. No, I decided to wait until the results of our test cases were quite complete. Fifty human guinea pigs. Now that I am certain of the success, yes, I will do it at once. Yes? My injection here. Have it already. Hypodermic field. Very well, Phil. How interesting it looks in its case, General. My immortality. Yes. You would like your youth again now, too? Oh, I... Oh, I am not ready. There is nothing to fear. You see? I pinch the skin in my arm. The needle bites for a moment. So, it is done. Do you... Do you feel pain? Huh? Uh, pain? No. No, no, no. Only a strange warmth in my veins. I, I feel... I feel my blood seems to run swift. Your, your face. What, what, what is it? Your face. It, it is changing. But yes. Yes, I feel it. I'm young. A young man again. Oh, I told you, young. Oh. You, will, you will pardon me. I'll tell you. No, 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 no. Let him come in. Let him come in. Nothing disturbs a young man. Nothing. Well, what is it you want? Well, how thoughtful of you to bring me such a beautiful young woman. Yeah, it is about her that I have come, Your Excellency. About her and the mayor. The mayor? Yeah, he is waiting outside. But who are you? You... 
Oh, yes, yes, I remember you. Yes, uh -huh. You are from the village. Ah, this woman, the first to be rejuvenated. Yes, uh -huh. your excellency, Adelina, the very first. The, the villagers, they send me to ask you. You will help her in the mayor, won't you, your excellency? Help? What are you talking about? Look at her, the picture of youth. She was dying of old age, but look at her now, young, beautiful. Yes, uh -huh. your excellency, so sad. Young, as you say, beautiful. But the devil's brew Dr. Miller put into our veins. Listen to what it has done to her. What? Uh, what? Speak, I do not speak. No. No. Yeah. No, I won't. I won't. Stop no. It. Make her stop. No. I order you make no, her stop. I no. thought quiet. I didn't mean no. that's quiet. No. My no. Tell me, you, you. Yes. Tell me, what's wrong with the woman? No, I tell you, the devil's brew. The, the stuff that makes her young. Speak, I command you, speak. A thousand pardons, Excellency. I'm trying to. It, it, it made her young. It, it made her body young. But day after day, her, her mind, it, it has kept on growing younger. No, no, you lie. You lie. Not the injection. It was something else. Something else that did it. No, no, no. I tell the truth. Uh, the mayor. He eh? did the same thing to the mayor. The injection. No, of... no. It can't be the injection. No. It, it... General, what? Why do you look at me? You. You took an injection. A large one. Get out. Out, all of you, out! You can't frighten me, get out, out! Get yes. out, you lie! It was not the injector, it was something else. I'm, I'm all right, my mind is strong, out! Out! Yes, 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 it was, it was lies. It, it, it cannot be the injection, no, no, no. Some, some, some strange disease, yes, yes, I... I'm all right. I, I must be all right. Yes, I, I, I'm strong. My, my mind is strong. I, I, I'm young. I, I'm not a violent man. No, no. I, I, I am young. My mind is strong. How can the mind grow young and the body stay old? It cannot be. My voice. My head. It spins. Younger. What was I saying? Younger. The room spinning. Where am I? My voice. These clothes. Soldier clothes.
Mother's Yeast. Present. Lights out, everybody. It is later than you think. This is Arch Obler bringing you another in our series of stories of the unusual. And once again, we caution you. These lights out stories are definitely not for the timid soul. So we tell you calmly and very sincerely, if you frighten easily, turn off your radio now. But if you're fascinated by the mysterious, the fantastic, the unearthly, then anticipate chills in our story of poltergeist. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, <laughs> that was swell. Now let's go to town. St. Louis woman with her diamond ring. Kicking that man oh, around. No. no, stop that, Kay. What's the matter? Am I scaring the horse? What? Oh, seems like a sacrilege singing a song like that out here. It's beautiful, clean snow and... Blue sky. Well, what's wrong with a hot song to keep us warm? If you think the St. Louis blues is going to dirty up the snow, you ought to hear Frankie and Johnny the way I sing it. Oh, stop it, Kay. You're not funny at all. Why can't you enjoy the fresh air without that cabaret sort of thing? Oh, just an old-fashioned gal, eh, Florence? How about you, Edna? Don't you like my songs either? You haven't said anything for the last five minutes. Well, I, I haven't been listening for you to tell the truth. I love to watch the snow sort of flow along under the sleigh. When you say that, gal, smile. Gosh, did you ever see more snow in your life? The man at the hotel said it had been snowing on and off up here for two weeks. I think coming out here to the country is the best thing we three have done since we started rooming together. Hiking in the snow is terribly healthy. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. The healthier I get, the worse I feel. <laughs> Crazy idiot. She does say the funniest things, doesn't she? I always say that Kay ought to... Hallelujah, we're here. Is this as far as we go, driver? That's right, miss. Can't go no further down this road, account of the drift. Oh, my goodness. The drifts are too deep for a horse. How can we walk through them? I second the motion. Well, you young ladies don't have to worry none, so long as you keep going down the valley over there. Snow ain't piled up that way all the way to Mar Jenkins. Oh, well, that's marvelous. Come on, girls. Let's get started. So long. Take care of yourselves, girls. Come on, Edna. Goodbye, Mr. Oh, Bell. Well, listen to the snow talking at us. Very dry snow. Our feet rub particles of it together, and the Ooh. friction makes a sound. It's kind of scary, yeah. isn't it? Why? Well, I don't know. It's just mm. as if the snow was sort of trying to talk to us. I mean, as if it was angry at our trespassing. Hey, don't tell me we're trespassing. I don't want any country squire taking any pot shots at my uh, constitutional amendment with rock salt. No, thank you. Oh, don't talk nonsense, Kay. We're not trespassing. Why, this path through the valley here over to Mrs. Jenkins' house is the favorite hike of everyone who comes up this way during the winter. What's Mrs. Jenkins got anyway that makes people walk their feet off? <laughs> Wait till you taste her cooking. Eat. Oh, boy, let's go. It's awfully quiet out here, isn't it? Oh, that's the glory of it. I've had the roar of the subway in my ears so long. Okay, don't walk so fast. Come on, look what I found. Oh, come on, Edna. Oh, please. Let me take your arm. I'm getting out of breath. Well, take it easy. There's no hurry. <sighs> well, what is it, Kay? Look, through the circle of trees here. Look what I discovered. Well, isn't that interesting? It's a sort of a natural amphitheater. Sure. Say, who was this guy, Daniel Boone? What's an amphitheater? Well, that, that means an oval circling place with rising tiers of seats. It's, you know, like that place we went to for the horse show. Oh. Back in the times of the Greeks, they had outdoor theaters. Well, listen to the professor. And they used to places just like this where the ground sloped up and made a sort of a natural arena or stage below. Theater. That's an idea. Sit down, gals, and I'll give you a special performance of the K Follies. It's awful snowy here, isn't it? I'll trample it down with my spring dance. 
Welcome, sweet thing. <laughs> she is not dancing in the snow. If I had that girl's energy. She's really graceful, isn't she? I'll bet if she went on the stage. She'd... Oh, hey. Hey. Oh, hey, did you hurt yourself? Oh, did I land on my dignity. Here, give me a hand. Here, I'll help you. There you are. Oh, did I take a flop? Did you hurt yourself badly? I'll live. What in the world did I trip over? Oh, no wonder. Look at that rock under the snow. No wonder I did a nosedive. Oh, my gee. goodness. There are rocks like that all over. Oh. A person could break their neck if they... Girls. What's the matter? What is it? Hey, the rock you tripped over. It... It's not a rock. What are you talking about? Of course it's a rock. Well, yes, but it's something... Something more than that. It's a tombstone. What? Tombstone? Oh, no, it, it can't be. Look it... for yourself. It says, Here lies buried the remains of one who, reckless in life... Stop. Don't read anymore. Stop. And and all these other stones laying flat on the ground. They're tombstones, too? Yes. Whew. What a place to pick to dance. Oh. What's the matter, Edna? What did you scream for? Hey, you, you danced on the brain. What? You danced on the grave. I saw you. I saw you do it. You danced on the grave. Okay. Edna, stop okay. it. Stop oh, it. Right. Come into her. Edna, okay. stop acting okay. like that. For heaven's sake, control yourself. Okay. Hey, I'm so sorry for you. You danced on a grave. For heaven's sake, stop talking like that. Sure, I danced on a grave. Well, yes, of course she did. It was perfectly accidental. And what if it wasn't? What of it? The poltergeist. The what? Edna Hanson, what are you talking about? What's that word you just used? Okay, what have you done? You superstitious little fool. If you don't stop talking that way, I'm going to slap your face. What's the matter with you? I didn't do anything. You walked on the grave. You danced on the grave. Oh, Edna, be sensible. We all walked on graves, but it was purely accidental. Yeah. We had no intention of desecrating them. It doesn't matter, I tell you. It doesn't matter. The polder guy. He'll come. I know he will. Oh, what the you? She's crazy. Edna, what are you talking about? What's the poltergeist? What are you so frightened about? My father. He told me, if you walk on a grave, if you dance on a grave, the poltergeist. Poltergeist what? What is a poltergeist? An evil spirit. It comes out of the grave. It kills. It destroys. It'll kill us. It'll kill us all. Stop it. Things oh, out please. Of Lay off that. Will you get me? But it won't get me. I'll run away. come back here. She's gone insane. I'll get her. Edna. Okay, catch her. Edna. Edna, don't run away. Nothing will hurt you. Nothing. Oh, Edna, look out. Hey, what happened? That stone. It hit Edna. Edna. Edna, open your eyes. Blood. Blood all over her face. Hey, who threw that stone? Who threw it? I don't know. It came from the graveyard. Take it easy. Oh, Doctor, she won't die. <laughs> Tell me she won't die. Oh, no, no, of course not. And you're sure that her skull isn't fractured? Oh, absolutely not. Maybe a little concussion, that's all. Well, it's almost five. Our train. Can we get someone to help us carry her down to the station so we can get her on board? Board? I'm telling you that little friend of yours shouldn't be moved out of bed for a week. If you do... Well, it might be just too bad. Oh, Flo, what do we do? Uh, you go home, Kate. I'll stay with her. Oh, no, you won't. I'm not leaving you here alone in this godforsaken place. If you stay, I stay too. Kate, please be sensible. Why should we all lose our jobs when you... If can... you'll excuse me, you ladies, I've got to be on my way. Oh, yes, of course, Doctor. Is there anything more you can do for Edna, Doctor? Any medicine or something? No, nope, I've done all I can do. She's sleeping comfortable now. Uh... Miss? Yes, Doctor? The constable's sick, too, you know, and he's sort of depending on me to keep things straight. Now, uh, just how did you say that little friend of yours got hurt? Well, it, it was just the way we explained, Doctor. That rock came flying and... Yes, yes, I know, but who threw the rock? We... we don't know. What? That's true, Doctor. We don't know. But somebody threw it. You can't change facts. Somebody threw the rock that cracked her head. For heaven's sake, old man, you don't think we did it? No, okay. miss, I didn't. I did. Doctor, you've got to believe us. It happened just the way we said. 
All at once, that rock came flying through the air from the direction of the graveyard. It struck Edna, and, and we just didn't see who threw it. All right, if that's your story. Oh, you better stay in your rooms here. I mean, you better not be leaving until the constable's on his feet and has a chance to talk with you. I'll be back in a few hours and see how the girl is. He doesn't believe us. What difference does it make? We know what we saw. But what did we see? She was running. She she fell. Hey, well, let's not fool ourselves. There was no one there to throw that rock. There must have been. But there wasn't. Stop saying that. Aren't you brave enough to face facts? There wasn't any place for anyone to hide. I saw that stone. It seemed to come down out of the air. So slowly. Florence, if you don't stop talking like that. Do you remember what... What Edna said? It throws things. Stop looking at me like that. You're giving me the jitters. She said the poltergeist throws things. Spirit of evil. Florence, Rob, have you gone crazy too? Why should we laugh at things like that? What right have we got to laugh? How do we know there aren't powers we can't see or understand? Powers of evil that revenge and insult, just like an evil man. Hey, how do we know? What are you talking like that for? What are you trying to scare me for? You, you're supposed to be the most intelligent one of us all. You with your college degree. Sure, sure, I danced on the grave. But the dead are dead and they can't revenge a thing. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of anything. I tell you, it's not... What? It's Edna. Come on. Edna, we're coming to you. Don't be afraid. We're coming. Open the door, Florence. It's not locked. Don't get won't here. Let me. Edna, what is it? What? Edna, what? On your head. Oh. 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 Going on here. I run a decent place and I don't want you. <gasps> oh. The girl on the bed. Her head. It's crushed flat in by a rock. God in heaven. It's not a rock, it's a tombstone. I I wish I could cry, but I haven't got any more tears. Oh, Edna. Edna. Lauren, darling, please. You'll kill yourself if you keep on like that. Oh, if this horrible night would only end. It was my fault. Mine. I was the one who got her out here. She didn't want to go. She hates the country. But I made her come. I made her. No. No, you're not the one to blame. I am. I danced on the grave. But she was so good. So sweet. Oh, why does it have to be happy? You're right. It wasn't right for it to be her, was it? I did it, not her. I did it. I danced on the grave. I danced on the grave. You can't deny what you see with your own eyes. But I tell you, Doc, nobody could have carried that tombstone up the steps without me seeing him, could they? But there it is, ain't it? Yeah. There it is. Either somebody's playing a terrible joke or... You don't have to say it, Doc. I know. That's just the trouble. You don't know, and I don't know, and nobody knows. Yeah. And... And that tombstone. Well, what about the tombstone? I... I ain't quite sure, but... 
That's a tombstone out of the old burying grounds up at the bend. You're crazy. No, I ain't either. Well, that place is a good three miles from here. Yeah. I know. Who could have carted a heavy stone like that for three miles? Yeah. Who? Stop looking like that, you flap-eared old fool. Human hands carried that stone in here and killed that girl? Sure. Yeah, the constable will find out who did it the minute he's on his feet again. You wait and see. No, he won't, Doc. You're smarter than me and all that, but no, this time you're wrong. There ain't nobody that takes in breath and leaves out breath like you and me. And the constable's going to find out who killed that girl. You know that, Doc. Oh, stop talking. I wish the constable was here and this night was over. It's been a terrible night. Terrible. Terrible clock. Hickory. Hickory. Yeah, I know. I've been sitting here listening to it. I can't stand it anymore. I'll stop it. Why bother with it? Come on to bed, Kay. Please. There's no use sitting there. You won't help her. Yeah. Nothing can help her. But maybe I can help you. Me? It was my fault. Mine. I was the reason it happened. It killed her, and it'll kill you and me, too, unless I stop. No, don't say that. It's true. But why should you be hurt? I'm to blame, not you. Listen, Flo. I'll go out there. There? Out there to the graveyard. What? I'll talk to her. Can I'll, you? I'll tell her I didn't mean to do it. No. I didn't know where I was dancing. Maybe somehow it'll hear. Listen to me. It, and then it won't hurt oh, you. No, no, I won't let you go out there. It'll kill but you. Florence, It'll kill you too, Florence. No, no, I'll hold you. You can't go. You can't. All right. Come on to bed, Kate, please. In the morning, in the morning things will be different. But it won't. Nothing will hurt us. And then they're right outside the door. They won't let anything get at us. Oh, please, Kate, please come to bed. Yeah. We'll, we'll pray. Pray? I... I don't exactly know how. Just say anything. Anything. Like this. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Now you. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord... My soul to take. Kay? Kay, are you asleep? I can't sleep anymore. Kay, tomorrow, I mean, when it gets light and everything, do you think people will believe us? Do you think so, Kay? I'm not quite sure what happened. I always used to be so sure about things. And now I... Kay? Kay, where are you? Kay, where... The window. She went out the window. She's gone out there. To the graveyard. To talk to it. Okay, why did you go? Why did you go? I'll go out there, too. We should be so frightened out there alone. I'll go, too. I'll go, too. Oh, so cold. Hands. No, so sharp. Cutting my legs. Oh, why did you go out there, Kay? Why did you? I've got to find you. A wind. Oh, why doesn't the wind stop? Slow blow, thou winter wind. Thou art not so unkind. <laughs> Like snow. Edna didn't like snow. Where 
about it. Where are you? I lost my way. I lost the road. Where are you, Kay? Kay, where are Okay. I heard you, Kay. I heard you. I'm coming to you, Kay. We'll talk to it. We'll talk to it together. We'll tell it we didn't mean any harm, won't we, Kay? Won't we? Poor Edna. We can't help her, Kay. We can't help Edna. But I'm coming to help you, Kay. I'm coming. I'm coming. Yes, I hear you. I hear you. I'm coming, darling. I'm coming to help. I'm coming to help you. I'm coming. I'm coming. I hear you. I hear you calling my name. I hear you. Yes. Yes, I hear you. I hear you. Where are you? Where are you? No! This way, Hooper. They must have come this way. <laughs> Climbing out the window like that in the middle of the night. They must have gone crazy, the both of them. Well, let's not worry about that now. We've got to find them. Here, give me that van. What is it, Doc? What have you found? A shoe. One of the girl's shoes. My gosh, stuck in the snow. We're going the right way. Come on, move fast. We've got to get to them. Doc, look at this. What is it? Over there. Ain't these footprints? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's right. Footprints. Hello? Up ahead. Hello? Doc, we're, we're getting pretty close to the old burying grounds. Well? Maybe. Oh, look here, Doc. Let's not be fools. Let's wait till morning. What? Let those frightened girls freeze to death? Get along. But, Doc, are you... Come uh, with me or the whole town will know what a yellow-livered no-good you are. All right. All right. You don't have to get so sore, Doc. Hello? Anybody up there? Hello? Doc. Doc, look. What? There they are. Up ahead. Glory be, they're alive. The both of them. Come on. Doc. Doc, look at them. That's the burying ground up there. And they're dancing. Dancing on the grave. What? They must be out of their heads. Come on. We've got to stop them. Doc! Doc, wait for me! Oh, Doc, it's... It's Doc again. Where are they, Doc? Where are the girls? Have they... Have they stopped dancing? Yes. Huh? They've stopped dancing. Did... Did they ever dance? What are you talking about, Doc? We saw them. We saw them dancing in this place with our own eyes. Did we? The moonlight. Here it comes again. See with your eyes again. <gasps> oh, no. Both of the girls froze stiff to the ground. Each with her head crushed by a tombstone. Um, Strobler, would you mind telling us, me? Whether there actually are such things as poltergeists? All I can tell you is this. 
There are authenticated records in existence that in the city of London on the 27th day of April, 1872, from four in the afternoon on a Thursday until half past 11 at night, a certain room in a certain house was deluged by stones thrown from no apparent source. The London police surrounded the house, but they found no trace of whoever or whatever was throwing those stones with a murderous violence. I, uh, I see. So much for poltergeist. But what about next week? Well, anything can happen, but uh, specifically next week, Mangara. A strange title and a strange story. A power of suggestion. The dictators have shown us to what evil purposes that power can be used. Well, next week, a man who, uh, <laughs> but that, as usual, is next week. Yes. Lights Out, written and directed by Arch Obler, will come to you again next Tuesday at the same time. Be sure to listen for the amazing story of Mungara. It is later than you think.